Welcome to the uh, celebrate birthdays. Hampton Municipal Budget Committee's meeting. And the date is the third day of 2019. Yes. Could all join me in pledge of allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'd uh, remain standing for a moment of silence for, uh, we had a couple of uh, people in our town pass away on um, this past week. Nancy Waddell and our own uh, Brian Lapham with the Budget Committee. Thank you. <coughs> Under our agenda, Mr. Frank DeLuca, you love to begin the introduction, so why don't you do so? Okay. Uh, Frank DeLuca, school board representative. Brian Warburton. My name is Jones. Mike Plouffe. Bob Ladd, village district representative. David Mara. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen representative. Stephen LeBranch. Okay, thank you. <coughs> we have, uh, we now have a vacancy on this committee. Um, and uh, we're, of course, welcoming anyone who wants to step forward uh, to volunteer to fill that vacancy to contact me. Uh, we'll be dealing with, uh, with that uh, presumably next week if we have anyone that actually wishes to fill the vacancy. Mr. Chairman? You should know that, yes, Bob. I would consider not discussing the vacancy this week to be respectful to the member who has just died because he only died Monday. That should be a, an appropriate interim, in my opinion, before we move on. I concur. Unfortunately, the law does not. When there's a vacancy on the budget committee, we're obliged to announce that vacancy and fill it as <coughs> soon as possible. So uh, I'm announcing to the public that the seat is available for anyone who wishes to apply. Um, you should all know that we, we did have, I did have contact from two very experienced individuals in town who expressed an interest in filling that vacancy, <laughs> so I expect that we probably will be voting on the matter at our next meeting. So, on to our next item on the agenda, which I believe is information requests. Most of these are, in fact, almost all of these are from uh, request of Christy Pulliam, which I believe she has responded to this afternoon. Um, <coughs> 2018 uh, Warren article balance. Uh, she did, I remember reading it earlier, I don't remember what the number is at the moment, but she did print them out and I have them in front of me, but it's just not jumping out at me. I assume we can mock, mock that it's satisfied. You all got copies of this, right? Yes. And we've got uh, new disk drives intended uses. Uh, she uh, also supplied the answer to that. So I'm knocking that as satisfied. Workbook PC replacement schedule, I believe Dave, you were primary driver on that. Or was it you, Brian? I believe that she satisfied that with, a, with an Excel spreadsheet. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We did have um, I did have a question of how that spreadsheet was working, but I think I can deal with that offline with Christy. Um, I must be wiring. She also responded to that. I assume we can likewise mark that satisfied, is that correct? Mm -hmm. The SAM and firewall licenses, will they continue to work without paying the annual fee? I believe the answer was a qualified yes. Is that accurate, Christy? So we're dealing with the question, which was, will the uh, software monitoring, as well as the firewall software licenses, continue to function if we don't pay the annual fee? And I believe your response was a qualified yes, correct? It was a qualified no? It was a qualified that 
if we run into a problem. Well, that was the qualification, yeah. So the answer is still not known whether we continue to work or not, is that what you're saying? They'll continue to work. Okay, so it's qualified, yes, yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Regina. Could I give some, I've had a personal experience lately, and I had some questions which the finance director uh, addressed for me earlier this week. I was nervous on why when I went on to the town website, it said it was an unsecured network. Yeah. And Chrissy, please interrupt if I'm not reiterating this correctly, but she replied to me, and I've actually gone through a similar circumstance before at the CPA firm I was at. Because things were not renewed properly and some of the software and hardware was no longer supported, that there's a re is that one of the reasons why when I go onto the town website that it's showing as unsecure? Because <laughs> the website is actually showing secure and it has okay. a lock on the website. You you're seeing not secure under the email and that is because of the fact that we can't get a certificate for our mail server any longer because the company that we have our mail server on is no longer in business. So in the budget, in the MIS budget in front of you, there's I think $3,600 or something for a new mail server license. However, it is still secure because it's behind okay. our firewall in and hosted in-house on our own server. So it's okay. not like it's out. So if it was an unknown um, server, it might be Correct, yes, there. but since okay. it's here behind the firewall and managed by RIT in-house, then it, even though it says not secure, it just means that it doesn't have the certificate, the DigiCert certificate that you can get, that people can get for a website. But it could get it if we had a more up-to-date system. If we had a more up-to-date um, mail server, then yes, we could buy a certificate for it. If we felt it was necessary, it doesn't mean that right. it would necessarily be money well spent either for that. Um, okay. because of the fact that our IT is certain that it's secure where it is. The website, however, does have the little padlock on it. If you look up and it has HTTPS, colon, backslash, backslash, it has a little padlock next to it. So that does tell you that the town's website is, um, does have the DigiCert certificate and it is a secure website. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, what that tells us is that you're using <coughs> encryption up and down the wire. So when stuff goes to your server, it's encrypted. When it comes from your server, it's encrypted. It doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, yeah. secure. This is why I was highlighting the fact that when your McAfee software labels something as secure, it's a very relative term, right? Because in reality, nothing in the world is secure in the absolute sense. So there's levels of security. There are rings of security. Where those rings exist or whether they exist is the question. And how they evaluate that in their software has to be examined in order for you to draw a, a reasonable conclusion. As Christy was pointing out, they have security on the server because it's behind the firewall. If you get beyond that firewall, it doesn't appear to be secure because you're now inside that firewall. But not everybody <coughs> can get inside that firewall. And that's what makes it secure from that point of view. Right, Christy? Thank you. What I was trying to clarify is that I think that when a system is more up to date and can be fully supported, it's going to become more secure. That's just the way I view it. I know that I went through the similar circumstance at a CPA firm. We weren't able to update our service completely and we were nervous about customer confidentiality. When we did that, but we were able to get the full support, we had less of a concern. That's all I was stating. These things shouldn't just be simply push down the road because no one wants to deal with them. Right, I agree. Things shouldn't be pushed down the road. Nor should they be being a priority because you're nervous without justification. Okay. I'm not uh, nervous. I thought I heard you say you were. Anyway, the official opinion on the uh, yes, second year appropriation of the trash, I believe you had an update, Virginia, on that? I yes, I've spoken with town council, and he wants we we want to bring it to the bo full board of selectmen, and we should have an answer for you after we meet again. As you all know, I, s I forwarded you the email, in which the legal questions that were posed to uh, mm -hmm. a town attorney uh, was submitted, and Regina has uh, assured me that 
<coughs> town attorney is going to be at the next board of selectmen's meeting and address those questions at in that public forum. Uh, so we'll all look forward to that. I believe that is all for information requests. Is that Mr. Walbert? We also received, thank you, uh, Director Jacobs and Deputy Hale, two requests that we asked about the, the uh, diameter in the pipe for the, uh, the new water line. We got the email on that. We thank him for that. And also the listing of streets to be paved that Mr. Mar asked is in the CIP report that was uh, that's handed out. So we thank Director Jacobs and Deputy Hale for sending us those emails. That is correct. Thank you, Brian, for pointing that out. Uh, it wasn't on our official request list, no, but, but because we had that meeting where we were basically exposing our thoughts in the various Warren articles, we gave the department heads a, a chance to look at the videos. Apparently, Chris was proactive enough to do so and immediately supplied us with a whole bunch of very useful information. And I'm sure we're all very happy to have seen that and looked at it over already. No, and I might add very timely on the Director of Public Works uh, right away and the Deputy Director, which is... It's excellent stuff and very well explained, so we appreciate yeah, that. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that's, a, that's it for old business. Anyone else have any other old business? Mr. Ladd. I would move to reopen Article 45, which we discussed last week, which I voted in favor of and with more consideration by me. I would be against recommending its approval if it's reopened. It's the one that passed seven to one by us. Yeah. 45 is on the screen. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think we took a vote set for the seven to one. This is to eliminate the Hampton Beach precincts uh, fund, I guess, for uh, basically called Fund 21. I don't know what the title of it is. Yeah. Though. It's like well, yeah. Fund 21. Yeah. This looks like signal 46. Huh? <laughs> Area 51. <laughs> there you go. This, uh, for years, the 20% of the parking lot revenue was dedicated to utility and infrastructure work at the beach. And the town voted to end that. But prior to ending that, this money was placed in this fund for that work. And if, where there's still over $41,000 in the fund, my preference would be that where it was dedicated to utility at work at the beach, that that's what the money be used for and not just lapse into the general fund. Is there any objection to reconsidering uh, this uh, article? I don't mind reconsidering, but I have some discussion. Yep. No objection to reconsidering this? We will reconsider this later on tonight or okay. at the very next meeting, okay? All right. Now we're on to the, uh, the Warren articles, huh? <coughs> All right, the first one is the master plan. Mr. Chair, Mr. LeBranch. Can you go back one screen? Sure. I don't know if the, um, the audience can see the screen as well. The, um, you, I saw this on your, uh, what's it, HamptonBud.com. Yeah, it's on, I put a link to this on the minutes. Yeah. And I just want to comment on the amount of work that's put into doing this, and it's extremely mm -hmm. helpful, mm -hmm. I found. But, so I just want to thank you yeah, for the amount of work that you put into doing this. You have buttons that are, it's, it's very intuitive, it's, uh, just a lot of information. It's, it's, it's really a good tool. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's actually uh, one of those last minute ideas. I've been developing this as, as the need on the committee arose. So when this became obvious about a week or two ago, I just kind of like dived in and, and, and wrote all this code behind this and then populated it with the data. And it's been an interesting exercise on my part. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, that you guys are appreciating uh, its utility. Uh, hopefully future budget committees will, will see the wisdom in having tools because we, we are inundated with a lot of information, especially at this phase in the cycle. And having tools to facilitate the consumption of that information is really a, a big thing that's been missing from, from this committee for a long, long time, I think. And uh, hopefully this is a small step toward encouraging that uh, kind of uh, usage of type, that type of tool. 
very Thank well you. done. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Um, so we're on to the uh, master warrant, master plans warrant article, or the warrant article for the master plan, yeah. or should I say the plan to plan the master plan? Yeah. Um, do we have anyone from planning? Jason, do I see you back there? You well, we're looking forward to hearing from you so much. <laughs> I assume you saw the uh, the video snippet from that <coughs> meeting. I did. I had an opportunity. Okay, great. To do that. So tell us why our thinking is wrong, or could other ways be improved. Okay. So. So first of all, um, I did just for your reference, I, this is the master plan that we have right now, this binder. It's a very large, uh, unworkable, unusable binder. Um, it dates back to 1985. Um, sections here and there have been updated over time. But really, I mean, 34-year-old master plan, basically. And it's not you know, something that's really user-friendly or, uh, user or, or workable. Um, so really what we're proposing here is to basically, ultimately after we go through phase one, which we're requesting for this uh, cycle, and later phase two, the ultimate master plan will replace this that comes from that. So it'll be replacing that document. Um, a few of the questions that I saw from your video. Uh, one question was there was concerns as to whether once we were done with this, will this plan, the new plan, sit on the shelf? Um, I would say absolutely not, um, because once we go through the process, this phase one process and then phase two and have a plan adopted, that plan, I would recommend having something like an implementation committee, which we've had in the past, in places where I've worked in the past, um, which, you know, make sure that the recommendations of that final plan are adopted and, um, <coughs> you know, administered by uh, that Excuse committee. Me. So. So there'll be something, so it won't collect dust on the shelf. It'll be something that will be worked upon, worked on. And as far as another comment about the length of the plan, I can't tell you how many pages today it would be because we, you know, we haven't gone into the process yet, but I can tell you it won't be this. The planning board, you know, is adamant that we have something more concise, something that's user friendly, something that people can come to the, you know, go online, come to the office and look at. They can see the different sections, uh, components, elements of the plan, and you know identify things quickly. Um, questions about the beach master plan? It's actually the beach master plan is technically the neighborhood plan of this. So basically, it would be incorporated by reference, as was discussed. We aren't the HBAC is responsible for for amending that plan. We aren't proposing changes to that. It would be incorporated by reference in our new plan. Excuse me, Jason. Yes. Um, when did the HBAC get the authority to change the master plan? <coughs> I, I do know that they, like anyone else, can make suggestions to the planning board to change the master plan. For the well, Hampton Beach master plan? The Hampton but Beach plan. Planning board that has the sole authority for changing the master plan, is that correct? They, yes, they, they adopt, no. well, they would adopt the, as they did with a recent amendment to that plan uh, a few months back, um, they would adopt the changes, but it's the HBAC who's been working on the beach master plan. There is an RSA, I believe, that created the HBAC that that is one of their duties under the RSA. To advise. That's their duty to advise. Adv that is correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But they've been going through the process of that beach plan and, and um, right. updating it accordingly, and that, that's been going fine. But I just want to be clear opinion. on the authority. Get Joe Sixpack down the street to come yeah. to the planning board with a suggested change, right. and the planning board could adopt that change, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, so basically the article before you is for the phase one task. It's not, I know you say plan to plan, but it's not really that. It's really a two-phase process. This fir first phase of it is the elements are having steering, a steering committee uh, formed and facilitated um, using uh, professional planning consulting services, uh, working with the planning office, of course, and the, and the planning board. Um, there'd be um, intermunicipal coordination uh, with review and input on documents um, and coordination with various departments, land use boards, and commissions. Um, another very important component is, is one of the elements, uh, required elements of a master plan in New Hampshire is a vision chapter, a vision section. This phase one, there would be the visioning sessions and ultimately one of the products will be a draft vision chapter. 
that would be ultimately part of the overall master plan. So there is it's the start of the process there. There'll be outreach and coordination uh, with the public. Um, there would be some survey um, work in terms of surveying the public. Um, there's um, definitely more technical means of doing that these days um, and reaching out to the public where you get good response rates. Um, and also one of the products would be a master plan template which is gonna lay out structurally what the phase two part, which is the final master plan product, would consist of the different elements. Likely, for example, this plan doesn't have an economic development chapter. That's something we'd probably want to look at, including there. There's no, um, you know, coastal cli or climate or coastal uh, resource chapter. That's something we'd probably want to look at there to look at things like sea level rise, uh, other issues of that nature. So it's to set that foundation for the overall update, but it's not real, but it's starting the process. It's not saying we're starting the process at phase two. This is starting the process. We'll have something in place when we go into phase two and ultimately do the full update. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I have as far as the process. I'd open it up to further questions. So your town master plan is from 1985? That's correct. It's from, it dates back to 1985, and like I said, some sections have been updated since. And are you aware of any prior attempts to create a new master plan for the town? To create a whole new master plan? I'm not. I know that they've updated over time chap chapters here and there, but that's why you ended up with this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Any uh, questions on the master plan one article and Jason's presentation? Mr. Just uh, some historical clarification. Um, <coughs> the HBAC was established in June of 2003. I, as chairman of the Board of Selectmen, worked with stakeholders uh, to do that as a result of the 2001 Master Plan Committee that was established. And it's important to know which, why it all came about is the stakeholders involved with that were DOT and DES and state parks. And it was an important initiative that took place. And, and a lot that's happened since has been good stuff. So Jason is right. And so that I want just the public to know that that was, that was a lot of work. And at the time, we worked with Representatives Frank and O'Neill and others to, to get that. It's hard to believe it'll be 16 years in, in June. Um, I'm going to ask a question that my friend, Mr. Mara, uh, Who's, who's very astute, and, and, he, and he asked this last week, and it stuck in my mind, and, and it really goes back to what you just said about that big binder. Um, what are the goals? Do we have three goals in mind? So in other words, 18,000, and to your point, I think you said 18 to, what, what word, I was laughing last week, you said to work on the project to present a project plan or something, I forget how you word it. No, but to create a plan, to create a plan. Create a plan, to create a plan. Yeah. So that being said, and, and you know, back in the days where, and I know Regina would be interested in this, we used to go to these seminars and clock with the Office of State Planning and they'd say, a, a plan is really this, and Mr. Welch would get a kick out of this, it's the status of any boards at the time or what's going on in communities. And so years later, we're back, at, now we're 2018, and I, I agree with what you're trying to do, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to be something that's never going to be, and we see plans out there now, and they're not really enacted, right? I mean, developers come in or get variances or whatever it is, and the beach people pointed that out in there. So that's my big question here is, to your points, and I think you, you hit on them last week, was I, I think there needs to be more meat in here of what is the objective, Why right? Some people would say, do we really need to do it? With, with this town is, is pretty much all land brought up and business space and everything else, so that, that's where I'm going at. I'm just kind of wondering where you are because you're the, you're the planners. So. Right. Well, I mean, the master plan, it is in the RSAs that it's the duty of the planning board to prepare and amend from time to time a master plan. And like I said, what we have here by and large is 34 years old. Um, I, I stated at the beginning of my talk here that once we have this uh, revamped master plan in place, the one thought in my experience that we would do is establish an implementation committee. That implementation committee ensures that plan doesn't sit on the shelf. It ensures that there's a committee, it would be a subcommittee of the planning board, I'm sure, mm -hmm. that would be you know, holding basically accountable the, the recommendations that are in there to make sure that people know what they are, that the, the 
appropriate um, authorities who are responsible for those recommendations <coughs> are looking at those. Um, so, I mean, those are things that I can tell you now that I would be looking at at the end of this process to ensure, because I agree, there, there's no way something like that should sit on a shelf and there's no way that it should be unusable. I mean, it's too important to the community. It's too important to the long range, you know, basically conservation and development, you could say, activities of the community. It's all based right there, everything we do. Um, but we can't really use that effectively. Thank you. I have nothing else. Anybody I know. Else? Mr. Mora. You totally lost me. Okay. Which is probably usual for most people. If you were doing your current, we're called the vision, mm -hmm. and you don't have specific objectives of what they are, and you haven't, is my opinion, you also talked about we're going to create a committee. So maybe part of creating the committee would be part of A. Let's break it into A and B. The plan to create the plan is B, the final plan, which you're going to work on. A is what is supposed to be contained within this. How do you know you're going to be successful? You're spending $18,000. What are your goals? Clearly put down in black and white. They probably should only be three. They could be two. They could be one. But you're not clearly articulating what the end goal is. So when you finish the $18,000, you know you've hit the mark and you continue on. If not, you should be looking at it and say, what did we miss so we can continue on? But you don't have a, I'm not hearing a specific goal. I'm not hearing a specific objective. I'm totally lost. It's all, I was in IT. We, we, we had, a, we had, it was in IT, we had three sayings. One was, uh, this software, we all write software. This hardware. And you know what the hardware is, the machines and all that sort of stuff. And then we had good old IBM come in with the vaporware. And it was all talk. They had nothing written down into a vision they had. Some of the visions came through, most of them didn't. Some of them would work with you and help you to create the vision. So we'd, we really, we'd doing that, we would partner with them and do what they're doing. But you need approval after the $18,000. Who's the people going to make mistakes? that we really have a path to go on. You don't want to have the wrong path. I'm making this up, by the way, because I'm hoping you're going to have it all done right. But you could have path B and C. So you might have options that come out after you investigate. That's one big, thick book. And now I'm hearing it started in, in 2001, 2001. The beach yeah. Down there, and yet you don't know what's in. So how do you object to it? The beach point plane will be in here. This will be done. This will not be done. This, these are the things that are in it. But along with that, you should clearly articulate, this is the most important one, what will not be in it. We had so many plans at, at the company I worked for, and I was a big guy in what's not in it, so you can understand what was in it. But it was so vague, so we specifically, this will not be done, this will not be done, and this will not be done. People had clear expectations. I'm not clear on what you're trying to do. I understand Hampton have a master plan for where you want to go into the future. I understand we need to have one. I'm not necessarily comfortable that you have a plan on putting it together if you don't have the objectives and expectations clearly articulated for the $18,000. It's just, well, we want to get a plan to have the plan. Well, Could no, you help I'll, me, please? I'll try to. So what, I mean, part of this, as I said, is the visioning sessions and establishing that draft vision chapter. In my experience in working on, on master plans elsewhere in the past, um, that's where your goals and objectives are set. When you have your, your committee, your master plan steering committee, and they're looking, holding these meetings, these visioning meetings, and working toward this chapter, that's where you're <coughs> establishing your vision statement. That's where you're establishing your initial goals, goals and objectives of the project. I'm with you there. Therefore, that's that's, that's what I'm asking so, so about. We don't have, obviously, a specific answer on that, but we have a process here that the planning board's been talking about for a long time to establish those goals and objectives as we go into this um, master plan update. So I guess I'm a little, I think it's explained pretty well, just in my opinion. Um, Not at all, in my opinion. Okay. okay. Did I have a? You may have the floor. Something. Go ahead. David has the floor. Anyway, you want $18,000. It's called plan A. Can we call it plan A? Sure. Right? Why can't you sit down with a group of people who are putting this together and come out, what are your clear objectives? One of the objectives I think might be, one of the objectives of this is going to be, we're going to have clear objectives for the master plan. 
clear objectives, which will have what we will do and what we won't do, as an example. <coughs> you probably might even have a timing. When do you plan to have it done? You get $18,000 and you're paying for people, you must have a target date by a certain date because you don't want to spend $36,000. Right. Okay. Do you have a response to that? Um, so, I mean, we would look, the article says, you know, has a date of December 31st, 2021 to be completed. We would hope that it would be much sooner than that. Um, but, you know, we think that it probably, maybe a year, year and a half. I mean, but, you know, the board has talked about it. We've talked with uh, the Rockingham Planning Commission. We've had them review our existing master plan, um, you know, at least, and, and help the planning board guide them in how to be, you know, establish this process because this is so um, unworkable at the moment. I mean, I think obviously our goal is, our ultimate goal is for the long range planning and conservation of the community. And the master plan is the basis for that. Um, and as we go through this visioning process and as we go through with the steering committee and working with the consultant on this, it's all really gonna come together, right? I don't know how else. What are the plan. expectations of your visiting group? What are they going to do? What are those expectations on A? That's what I'm asking. Right. To, to have a vision for the community, to have a template that outlines those chapters of the master plan that, um, that we anticipate would be in there, the elements like the economic development, the natural resources, the transportation elements, the housing then elements, list those as the objectives historic, the historic uh, resources, uh, you know, coastal issues, things like that. There'll be chapters of the final master plan. So our, I guess you could say an objective would to be have, to have those chapters in the plan. To me, those are elements of the plan. To me, that's... Those are objectives you have to have written down. <clears throat> is the the to you plan, so you know you hit the hold, on, hold on a second. The I think that the point here is that we, all that list of stuff that you just yep. enumerated yep. is not in the Warren article. Yep. And I believe and that is the nature of and the it challenge be. that's being put forth, is that how can we or even the voters endorse this appropriation with the article lacking the specificity that you are giving to us orally. That's the issue that I think that is being raised, correct? correct? Okay. Yes, sir. So but those, those if you are want to respond to that particular thing with regard to the wording of the contract, the creation of the implementation committee, for example, is on, I think this is just an idea in your head, right? I just threw that out there because yeah of a comment that came up at your last meeting right. about is this something that's going to sit on the shelf and my answer is no and I wanted to give you a justification of it's a possibility that I would hope be. it's more than a possibility but I would think the planning I wanted, board has not created such a committee right well not they wouldn't complete it until after the plan's done right, right. so it's, it's just uh, not part of the one article verbiage right. is, is, is again is right. the challenge is we really we're looking at what's in front of us that's what we have to vote on ultimately and yeah, we can get explanations if we are confused on a particular phraseology or something like right. that. But there was a fairly lengthy enumeration on your part about what it will mean, but that meaning is not in the Warren article. But I think that those elements that I noted, economic development and others, those are elements that you would see at phase two when they work on that part of it. When, when after phase one is done, that's where that would be. Do you have any, any gut two. sense of what phase two is going to cost us? At this point, I, I wouldn't want to just guess at a number for you. Well, it's more than more than eighteen thousand for sure. Yeah, it would be definitely six figures, right? I don't know that. It's going to. I can't. I'm not going to assume because okay. I don't know that. Okay. So you have no no sense at all in that. Okay, good. Any other questions, Regina? I believe you had your hand up. Well, yeah, and I think Jason addressed most of what I was going to say, but this eighteen thousand. We have an, we, right now we have a master plan, correct? We have a master plan. Te and yeah. technically, right. Yeah. But it hasn't really been updated wholly since 1980. 85. Okay, so 30-something 30 34 years. years ago, yes. Yeah. So the question really is, phase one, is do the voters, does the town want to have a plan? Does it want to start beginning to work on an updated plan so that if we spend $18,000 a year or two from now, we can have all the relative pieces because right. the town of Hampton doesn't look anything like it did in 1985. Okay, so let's just, that plan is non-applicable anymore. Right. So do we want to have an updated plan 
or do we want to just not really have applicable plan and just continue doing whatever we feel needs to be done because we don't have that plan to follow. I think that's really what the question is. This $18,000, we have no idea what in 2021 if we decide to go with phase two, whether it's gonna be $300,000, $500,000, $1.5 million. But the question is, do we wanna be proactive and have the plan or do we just wanna strut along? That's the way I look at it. So mm -hmm. I hope that we do have a plan. Right. It's just in dire need of updating, correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Mr. Ladd. I was on the area commission when they updated the area commission's part of the master plan. <laughs> Hampton and Beach does not, Hampton Beach Advisory Committee, or area commission rather, does not have the authority to update the plan. Okay, if you want to be semantic. No, I want to be accurate because okay. we are a committee in detail okay. and we deal with accuracy. Well, we spent weeks investigating the attitudes of the community, which would be comparable to your vision concept, <coughs> getting input from the community. And in that process, the community completely reversed what the state had proposed for the redoing of Ocean Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It was a very successful process. There was a lot of interaction, <coughs> but it was begun without a conclusion. The goal was to attempt to address an issue. That was a, a boulevard issue. This is a town issue. But nonetheless, you have the words term of vision within the warrant article. Mm -hmm. And all you really have to know is this is to begin a process to bring together a plan, ultimately to protect the town, and I would suggest probably to save the town. There are two major flooding studies going on now through the Department of Public Works, which will have an enormous impact on the outcome of this <coughs> uh, proposed master plan, I would assume. Sea level rise, in my opinion, this is an existential threat to the existence of this town at some remote point in the future. These are ways to address it timely in the present with some logic and some consideration for what the appropriate thing to do might be. Uh, so I would strongly support beginning this process. And I would say as an anecdote, we have incredible infrastructure problems in terms of costing and repair in this town because we didn't plan ahead. The master plan to me is an attempt to start that process timely rather than 10 years from now <coughs> to address something not very tall. You all set, Paul? Yeah. Just a little branch. Jason, you're hired by this town. You're a professional. Mm -hmm. You have the qualifications. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be the point person on this particular project. Right, of course. Okay. That's all I need to know. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Um, Jason, I have a problem with master plans, period, in this town okay. because I have observed them being ignored when convenient <coughs> and overemphasized when convenient. Okay. All right. And so I have no faith in the master plan of being any valuable service other than to uh, confirm the particular points of view that those powers that be wish to have confirmed or not confirmed which is not the purpose of a master plan, as Bob had described and others have described, it, and you described it as a master plan, is to give us guidance. The guidance is ignored when it's inconvenient. The particular irritation to me over the years was the Hampton Beach uh, master plan, which explicitly called for continuing, maintaining, actually, where it was to <coughs> maintain low-profile pro buildings at the beach. Planning board chose to ignore that so far as to, you know, endorse projects that were well above the, uh, the height limits of buildings that were in existence, and then went even further and, and proposed a, a warrant article to change the zoning laws to accommodate their preference without even giving any consideration to changing the master plan's verbiage on the matter. It was like the master plan didn't exist at all. Who cared whether it existed or not? 
we're going to do what we want. So why spend money on a plan in which they're going to do what they want anyway? That's the question I can't get over in my head and why I cannot support this war not vote. If you want to tell me why I'm wrong, feel free. But I, you're not obligated to. No, I, I'm just saying I think it's a very important part of the process. And, and you know, as nearly with nearly 20 years of experience as a planner, I've always used this as the basis for everything the community does. And I just think it's an important part. I know how to go through the process of making sure it's implemented. Um, and, and I will, as long as I'm here, I will do my best to make sure that that happens. My, my statement had nothing to do with yeah. you, Jason, at all, yeah. because those actions were not taken by you. They were taken by the, the uh, planning board, primarily. Anyone else? Do we wish to vote on this now? Hopefully the answer is yes. Yes. Okay, all those in favor of recommending uh, the Mass Plan and Warrant article, please raise your hand. I count four. Those opposed, raise your hand. I count four. Four. So it is a four-four not recommended vote. Okay. Thank you for coming in, Jason, and helping us out. Thank you very much. You need me help carrying that out. I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put it in the elevator. <coughs> can I have the yeas and nays? Put the yeas first. <laughs> I Brian Walburton was opposed. I was opposed. Mr. Pluff was opposed, and Mr. Moore was opposed. Everyone else was in favor. Okay, the next one is going to be um, the union contracts. And we're all anxious to hear from Mr. Sullivan, our deputy, or is it assistant, Tom Manager? I keep getting confused on that. Welcome, Jamie. Good evening. I assume you saw the video of the last meeting, and you're going to tell us what. I did see a snippet, yes. Yeah, okay, good. So um, there are a couple of questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer what you have. I was a little confused on a couple of them, but in general, um, what's up on the website, what's been presented to the board, and what I believe this committee has also received is a copy of the tentative agreement, which lays out the changes to the union contract. Mr. Mar, one of the questions I believe you asked was um, with regard to the costing sheet that talks about, or the article talks about, um, over the cost of. To, to be clear, the costing items you see in that Warren article are the new costs associated with the negotiated changes to the current contracts. So everything that's in the contract, consider that what our costs are, what you have in your wages, you have in everything else in the budget that you've reviewed. These changes, if adopted by the, the town, if they're approved, will result in these additional costs above those that are currently existing. Is that is, clear for you? Does that also include pensions? Stuff of that nature, sir. So yes, in, in the costing sheet that was attached, it breaks down into the categories where the changes are and it gives you what those numbers are. Um, that section you're talking about would be in the benefits. That might be changes to um, retirement costs, tax costs, that type of thing, anything related to the benefits attached to the wages. And how many uh, officers are David, hold on. Are you, are you done, Jamie? No, I'm just trying to answer the questions. Uh, you know, however you wish to proceed. I mean, I can just answer your questions. You saw the video. You saw our concerns. Yeah. Speak to them. Sure. So within the patrol contract, there uh, are two this, groups. Is this David? David. It's police sergeants. David. You don't have the floor. Jamie has the floor. Let the man speak. He asked me a question. I thought I was answering it. No, I thought you just asked how many were in the units. Yeah. Yeah. So in the patrol unit. There are 25 patrol, full-time patrol officers, and currently, and this is a, a moving target all the time, 33 part-time officers. That target moves throughout the year. Um, with the sergeants, there are six in that bargaining unit. Keep going, Jim. So that was, I believe, the extent of the questions I recall from Mr. Mara. Uh, the other questions, I'd be happy to open up to the, to the, to the group and answer them now for you. Well, one of the questions that, that I believe I raised was relative to the change in the prescription plan. Yeah. Uh, you said it was going to save us money, and there was a cost item in that transition, as I recall. Right. Right. So what occurred is several years ago, Health Trust, who was our provider for health insurance, 
they made a change to uh, the health insurance prescription plan. So you have health insurance, your medical, and then you have attached to those a prescription plan. They changed one of those prescription plans, which is contained throughout numerous contracts in CBAs. As a negotiated item, we are at risk if that benefit changes to, hey, you don't cover my prescription like you used to, we potentially could be at risk for that. So what happened in this, this case is we, the communities, communicated with Health Trust saying, hey, look, you got to give us an opportunity to, to deal with these at the negotiating table. You can't just unilaterally put them in. And they did that. So over the years, we've changed that issue in each of the contracts. The last one left on this is the police contract. They've been grandfathered. We must make that change in order to uh, uh, resolve that. So the prescription plan is the change that took place here. What we're doing is they're moving from what was a more expensive prescription plan that they eliminated with some mail-in and other issues uh, to a new plan that's offered. Um, part of that, you will see a reduction of both the town's cost and the individual cost. But again, in the negotiating process, what we did with the multiple units in order to instead to get off of this so we don't deal with this issue is added uh, a prescription, sort of a transition period, an $8,000 in this case. It was for each of the units similarly. So that if there's an out-of-pocket difference for that transition period until they're used to doing it, this will carry on forever. And those savings we anticipate will continue on. Uh, but that transition period is why that pool was there. Uh, to cover costs if they can prove the differentials uh, during that period of time. So the $8,000 transition cost? So, so what you've got is we're going to change prescription plans. Yeah. And the resulting changes to those costs will occur. Then there is a $8,000 pool that gets put aside. And for prescriptions that were previously covered for a period of time, they can come forward with proof and say, hey, I would have had this covered. We, we will pay them out of that pool if they have that that proof and move forward from there. Once the contract's over, while well, that pool is expended, that's gone. That's sort of a, a, during this period of time is when that exists and then that's gone in the future. So when the $8,000 disappears, we're done. That's it for that well, transition is, period. What is it, it's a three-year contract? This is a three-year contract. So and after three years, it's done even if there's still money there, is what you're saying, right? Correct, if there's mm -hmm. money left over, that turns back to the does, town. Does this $8,000 transition cost, it's the same issue with both contracts, right? Yes. Okay. Is that eight thousand for both contracts? Yes. Or one? Okay. With both units. Okay. Good. Um, I notice we have a, also have a warrant article relative to increasing uh, the revenue we're charging for uh, special details, and I know the selectmen are, have already believed approved increasing the rate of pay. So um, yes. And it's, it's, is that reflected in the contract, that increase? No, I think that was a little confusing, I think. And those are, those are separate issues. So what we have is, and questions were raised about what the detail <coughs> pay was. In this, the detail pay is adjusted. It was $35 or the officer's overtime rate in the pre previous contract. That's been moved up to $40 or the overtime rate. Um, that issue you're talking about in the separate warrant article has to deal with the administrative fees that are charged to those details to offset our costs. Um, it yeah, was. I, I guess my nature of my question was the increased pay uh, for details is a function not of this contract, but rather of the Board of Selectmen's vote on the matter. Is that true or no, not? It's uh, in the contract or not? Detail pay is in the contract. Okay. So that increase is actually in the contract. Which increase? Sir? The increased pay to the police officer on private Change detail. from 35 to 40. That's in the contract. Is in this proposed contract, yes. Correct. And it's not reflected in this cost estimate because it's not a cost. It's coming out of the fund. It's not coming out of the budget. Is that fair? Correct. And that okay. actually creates a profit is why it's not a cost item because of that amount of money that we put on the extra. And again, I want to be clear on that other Warren article. That only deals with the board uh, voted and has authority to change fees, how much you pay for a copy, yeah. how much you pay, whatever. So they voted to change because the chief, chief of police came in and, and said, hey, look, our current charge of 30 isn't covering our costs. We need to do something about this. So they voted to do that. The manager found in, <coughs> as you recall, the entertainment ordinance, the, the numbers in the, the article you're talking about to change to 50% comes from that warrant article that mm -hmm. changed the entertainment. That had a specific language of 30% in it. So that was voted by the town that has to be changed by the town meeting. All the other ones are done by the fee schedule 
and this warrant article is just de just dealing with that deficiency. That's what that's related to. Mm -hmm. I think you had made a, a question or posed a question, as I recall, a snippet, something to the effect of, if this fails, that'll affect the other. They're unrelated. If the change from 30 to 50 does not get approved by the town meeting, um, that means we just continue to charge the 30% instead of the 50 if somebody works in entertainment detail. They're relatively infrequent. Yeah. But it also means the fund would, would be uh, decreasing uh, at a greater speed if it's not bringing in that additional revenue that the Warren article uh, calls for, right? And again, to be clear, details related to that entertainment ordinance are fairly infrequent. So it would have to be related to that ordinance, one. And then two, yes, it would be charged at 30 instead of 50, and as we propose, that wouldn't cover the total cost of it. So we highly recommend we do that. That does two things. It changes that and gives the authority back to the board to set those fees with everything. So okay, that's, that's separate from the contracts. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, should we want to deal with both contracts collectively? Everyone okay with that? Yeah. No. Okay. I just have one Mr. question. Mr. Frank. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, what is the actual percentage of increase for both the uh, patrolman and the sergeant's contract? So the, the contracts are three years, the 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. Now, again, I'll point out that for pat the starting patrolman, is that... Yeah, that's your question. The question. Okay. It's a two point eight yes. percent increase. They're just being totally transparent. There's also a change no, in wage for those two positions. No, thank you. Anyone else? Questions on the contract, Mr. Walberg. Um, Mr. Sullivan, what is the current ratio of insurance, health insurance that offices are paying, and what would the future be? Is it eighty five fifteen? Is it eighty twenty? Uh, it, it varies based on the plan that they're on, Mr. Warburton. So it varies. I think it's it's the highest is 15% to 20%, depending on the plan they're choosing. That is, their, the employee's portion of the cost. The vast majority, I think, are at 15%. Is it safe to say that the senior patrolmen and, and or sergeants would be in the receiving end of the 8515 and the newer ones would be lower than that I don't know uh, no. it, again it's it was related to those changes of as they progress down had to do with which of the plans you chose really based on cost of that plan and do the prescription changes have anything to do with new new employees they're versus? not a phased in issue no sir it's an across the board change from health trust Right. And to Frank's point, and I think Jamie's not an answer, but the 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, which I found interesting in itself, um, especially where other contracts in town in recent years have been lead, you know, leading up to that. But anyway, that's what was I'm negotiated. I'm sorry, I don't understand that. Well, it's, I don't, like schools, for instance, went, they went like zero, one, and then two. I, I haven't seen this, this high increase for... Uh, contractuals and other the same with the firefighters I, I don't believe yeah, their last contract was 333 DPW was 333 but they went out point. they went without several years though right uh, they went one year different mm. so this contract was three years as you call the big global all the unions went a period of approximately six years without anything six and yeah. then there were a couple of one-year things that each unit did a little bit differently yeah. and then starting about three years ago the town um, um, approved the police contract in that first year, rejected the fire ones, and then the next year came back and approved those. So right now, the police are at the end of a three-year deal, which was a 333. As you recall, back when you were on the board, that was pretty much the constant number forever, 33333. They always were at that number. Um, as, as the six-year period of that difficult financial time went, there were zeros for everybody. And then they slowly moved forward with some of them did a one seven, some did a one something. It, it, there were some different reasons for different units to do that, but the police contract was the first one kind of going back more to, to that period of time. The current contracts that are out there that are approved by the voters were fire for 333, the officers last year for 333, uh, DPW for 333, and the Teamsters for, uh, I think it's 275 or 28? I think it was 275 for them, right? Because they had gone two years without. The, the point I'm making is this, and you were right in what you just alluded to years ago. We saved tons of money in negotiating because we did all six bargaining units at the same time. We, the voters in their mind, the reason we have these up and down years, they're constantly looking at, oh, they're coming back again this year with another contract. So 
the, the hypothetical question for you, you know, in the future, are we going to ever get back to negotiating so we keep those costs down and all that, all six at one time? Yeah, so I would answer it this way. All those contracts many years back were, well, not always, but there was a long period where outside counsel came in and negotiated all of those contracts. Those no longer get paid, all that savings, because we do it in-house. To answer your question, yeah, that's the way it was. Are we ever going to get back to that? That's a good question. Um, for example, uh, the two fire units, you'll see the fire officers last year opted to do two years to get back in cycle with the firefighters. Um, yeah. As far as whether the other units, Mr. Warburton, choose to change cycle, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. And it's and something for the table. The only other comment that I have one more question, I just want to clarify for the public, it wasn't outside counsel we used. We used actual labor contracts. Rennie Perry was not a lawyer. The point I'm saying is the public, and we're going to be talking more about this at the town meeting, needs to hear, and I used to bring this up with the whole legal counsel we had in town, you heard me speak at a town meeting seven years ago. How much are we saving with negotiating costs? Because that is important. Sure. This 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, because you don't deal with that in the schools because they always come back with three-year contracts. It's a little misleading because the higher guys are going to go off the roof. The lower guys are, you know, they're not going to catch up right away. But I, I think it's important to note, though, that... I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand your question. Yeah. Sorry. Well, the, the higher, higher guys, guys make out better on this. Well, because they're a higher wage, well, percentage-wise. Okay. Just like the private details that you were talking about. I mean, the yeah. higher guys. So, it, I mean, it's important to note. So I would hope that as we go to the deliberative session that there's maybe more dialogue on, I, I like to hear the savings. We've heard a lot about savings, and I certainly have been supportive of contracts, and my record is prudent. The only other question I'm going to ask, and we asked this when we negotiated years ago, and you, you were a policeman then when we negotiated what did what was given up in return for this? What what was given up in the negotiations that we can say to the public that the, why they deserve this? Yeah, I, I I guess that's an an old way of thinking. So here's what I would say: negotiations are a give and take at all times, Brian. And when you're at the table, things ebb and flow. When we okay. began our negotiations, there were multiple things that both sides were interested in. And as you go through a negotiating process, some things make it through, some get amended, some get dropped completely. Um, but the idea that, hey, if we're going to give you anything, you're going you're gonna to get nothing, I, fr I, frankly, I think that's an old, outmoded way of thinking. Um, it is what is best for the taxpayers. We go in there as our charge from the Board of Selectmen. What are your goals and objectives? We as the negotiating committee go in there to achieve those goals and objectives. Um, that's how negotiation works. The unions are represented by a group that do the same thing. Sometimes we're able to do that amicably, sometimes it's not. Um, to your point of the savings, we can have legal do some estimates. I know we've put them out before, uh, but the amount of money that's saved not using outside negotiators, you're right, Mr. Perry for years was one of them. Um, the other gentleman happened to be a lawyer. But there were a substantial amount of money that was paid for that. And that was the process at the time. <laughs> now we do it in-house. And, you know, there's pluses and minuses to both, however you see that. Yeah, the only comment I'm going to make, and I, I'm not going to get into the discussion, there, it is not the old way of thinking. Years ago when it was 100%. Well, that was my opinion, sir. Well, okay, that's fine. 100% insurance, you remember those days where you guys didn't pay a cent, but then when you went down to 85, 85 to 15 or even 90, 10, said if you give us a higher wage per hour, and that happened in the 90s, people were willing to negotiate. That is a way of thinking. Yeah, no, I agree and, with that. And that's, it's not old. It's, it's still happening today. We see negotiation. So all I'm saying is we are in a position, this is part and parcel of a whole slew of things we're asking the, the taxpayers. And I want to be a <coughs> component for you. Yeah, I agree completely. And that's all I'm saying. So at the delivery session, I, I, I'd like to see more estimates. And I understand, by the way, a good explanation. I understand how the weeks work and April 1st and all that. And I, I think we all, but just want to make it clear that, you know, it just seems to me, especially in the last 10 years, it just seems like we're negotiating all the time. So that's, a, that's an off thing. But I appreciate yeah, being, being a member of that committee, I would tend to agree with you. I'd love to have three years off cycle. That would be great. But Well, I appreciate we your answers. Uh, I have no more. Anybody else on the union contracts, either one? Uh, we want to vote on both of them collectively. Is that correct? Okay. You need a motion? No. All those in favor of recommending uh, both union contracts, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. 
Thank That's you. And you're all set on the second warrant article both, as well? Both contracts are unanimous. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the other warrant article regarding the... That's both union contracts are unanimous, sorry. To be Understood. Yeah. I'm talking about the third one we discussed here. Do you want to approach that now or do you want to come back to that? The issue with the change on the fee, the 30 to 50. Oh, you said they were unrelated, so let's keep them that way. It's completely... <laughs> you brought it up, not me. And you corrected me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand corrected. Okay, next up okay. is, uh, Help me yes, so dear. It was Motion was by Mr. Plough, seconded by Little Branch. Thank you. Unanimous on both. Uh, we're now going to be dealing with the fire department's personal protective equipment, and I'm sure the chief is going to tell us all the good stuff all that we need to know that we didn't know at our last meeting, right, Chief? Sure. Welcome, Thank Chief. You. Thank you. Good evening. Now, we did vote on this, we and did. it was unanimous 8 nothing. Thank right. you for that correction. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I guess we don't need to do anything on this. I, that's my error. I'm sorry. It's my, my apologies. No stress. Um, did we vote? Yeah, we did. Yes. I wrote yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, okay. it was actually down there. And I just made a mistake when I was clicking away here. Sorry and, about that, Chief. And, and if I could just uh, welcome Chief A. Thank you. Uh, if I could just comment and so you know where we're going to be going with this. This is one of these warrant articles that we liked for a number of reasons, and we talked about the protective gear. But for a large purchase, I, I had no problem, neither the committee, with using the un UFB, but that's going to change throughout. But now getting on to the four firefighters, I guess. Yeah, the so-called firefighter safer grant. Um, I didn't call it that. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. I wouldn't call it that either. <laughs> no, that's the federal government that called it that. That's uh, it's the FEMA um, Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Grant. So it's actually an acronym? It is. So it should be all capital, I'd say. Typically it is. <laughs> okay, uh, we raised some issues over this, I okay. believe. The primary one, at least in my mind, was... We've been asking whether you need more firefighters for some time, and we've never gotten a, an affirmative to that. Um, and so suddenly we have an affirmative, apparently, because of this one out of existence. You need four more firefighters. Is that what I'm hearing? And what I've been pressuring for for some time now was that we uh, apply the appropriate funding to get nine firefighters per day minimum. Okay, and I know that we've talked about that in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the intention to use the federal government's funding right now would be to get the tenth person. As we've talked about in the past, too, I know that you have heard me speak at length about how we run down. And if you'd like, I'll explain it again. But at the end of the day, each group, four groups, they start at nine. There's a captain, a lieutenant, seven firefighters. And then if there's a vacancy, we do not staff a firefighter position, so we run to eight. Good there? On a staffing to ten situation, if we use the federal government to assist us in that position, we would still potentially run down to nine which would give us that ninth man, we'd always run at nine. I can show you the benefit by telling you that our captains have been alone at some time when there's no callback. Um, and during that time frame, they're not able to perform calls as necessary. But when we have staffed at nine, which we did this summer, we did from June 15th through, we made it all the way through to almost um, Veterans Day. Um, the, the amount of time that the captain spent unable to respond was significantly reduced almost to a third because we actually had in-house firefighters who were able to perform the tests necessary to do it. Has there, any, has there been any issues over the last few years relative to not being able to put out a fire because of the present manpower? On the fire side, I would say, you know, without a further explanation, I certainly don't want to give you an off-the-cuff answer. Um, generally speaking, we do a tremendous job of, of responding to fires and also getting mutual aid mm -hmm. immediately. Uh, one area that I, and we're all aware that the ambulance call volume for us has far exceeded expectations even when this went into an existence um, some 20 years before I got here. Uh, to that end, we're seeing much more mutual aid responses in town from, from ambulances as well. So it's not just the fire side. The ambulance portion of our business is responsible for about 85 to 90 percent of our call volume. Mm -hmm. And on that side, we see more frequently the, the use of mutual aid coming in. During the fire side, we have two fire engines in town that are staffed, typically. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's evidence that it's not always staffed when the captains are alone because the second set of uh, crew has gone on second ambulance and callback hasn't arrived. But we have two engines that will respond, and then the ambulance company staffs the ladder truck. 
So we have definitely not had a full complement going to fires in our community for sure, mm -hmm. and we've relied on mutual aid to that end. Because on, on the face of it, from my point of view, the fire department in Hampton is a great fire department. I concur. And, uh, you know, it's hard to do better than great. Well. And so it strikes me as why, why do we need additional resources if we're already Earlier great? this evening, Mr. Bashan was here, and he was discussing the master plan. And you brought up 1985 is when the master plan occurred, right? right? Um, and I think, and Mr. Barnes, you had mentioned that the, this city, town, has changed significantly since 1985. Staffing in the fire department remains the same. In 1985, there were nine on duty. One was dedicated to fire alarm or dispatch, eight firefighters. Currently, if we run down to eight, I have one civilian dispatcher who's working as a fire alarm operator, but I still have eight firefighters. We haven't changed. This town has grown immensely. We've seen 1.4 million well, square okay, feet of well, real estate. To be fair, the grown. town has changed. I mean, of course. The, the fire alarm situation itself has been radically different from what it was in 1985. Certainly. The existence of uh, automatic sprinkler systems and buildings, True. Uh, which was virtually non-existent in 1985, is now there. Yep. Uh, there are a variety of things that make your job um, less of a challenge than they would have been in 1985. And to qualify that, I understand exactly what you're saying, and we're very um, diligent about code enforcement. Uh, by the same token, in 1985, if you remember, just, just think back to what you used to sit on if you went to visit your grandmother's house. It was wool and cotton batting on a wooden chair. The heat release rates weren't what they are today. In your, at home, if you have a Lazy Boy furniture, you know, you're in your recliner, the heat release rates are so great Fires are burning so much hotter and so much faster that the importance of getting there immediately and extinguishing that fire is greatly increased. Because at the end of the day, the time to flash over, which is when that room, the entire room, flashes over to fire, has significantly reduced. And there are videos online I can demonstrate for you if you'd like. But the, the legacy furniture that I was just talking about, similar to this hardwood, gave firefighters up to 29 minutes to respond, put up fire, single room fire. Now it's less than three. By the time we get there, after the fire alarm is called to us, 60 seconds to get ready, four minutes to drive there, we're arriving at time of flashover. So the entire room is, is expecting now to flash over to fire point. We need to apply water as quickly as possible. To do that, we need the appropriate manpower. May I ask a question? So we had lazy boys in 1985, too. And Polyfill. Uh, yeah. Pardon? Polyfill. Have you ever seen the inside? Well, stuff? I understand. Or, uh, that. If you I have understand. a dog and you've seen isn't, what they do to those animals, isn't there some sort of like they do with cigarettes? You have fire safe cigarettes now, right? Thanks sure. But thanks the, to the, the firefighters union fighting for fire safe cigarettes, and now you have fire safe furniture as well. Well, right? the, the furniture the is now embedded or built with. Not all. Not all, but not much all. of it is. Uh, some may be, mm -hmm. especially if you're a California standard. Mm -hmm. Not all furniture is relegated to that standard. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, the the polyfill that you're seeing inside of these lazy boys, the foam. It's, it's extended, extruded, we call it frozen plastic because it's a petroleum product. That is releasing gases and it's releasing fuel. So that smoke has become a fuel that is so pervasive and it flows throughout the building. If you watch any YouTube videos, if you take five minutes and watch it or watch any evening news, you'll see that fire is just, it's black smoke. We call that black fire. As soon as it reaches its ignition temperature and there's enough oxygen, the whole building will light up. That's what we're afraid of when we get there. And that's because of the contents and the fuel that's, that's um, being ignited nowadays. Well, as long as we're done trashing Lazy Boy, maybe you could suggest to the, I love Lazy Boy. Uh, maybe you could suggest to the citizens a different brand. I don't know. About uh, that. <laughs> Are there any other, Mr. Moore? I'm very interested because I got a whole family room full of Lazy Boy. <laughs> which I'm sure they'll thank you right years now. Ago. Certainly. My question is seriously, um, along with that, watching the news over the years, I thought, and I'm going to use the word thought, sure, that there were so many fires <laughs> with couches and things of that nature, that there were codes put into towns or the furniture company changed and made furniture less prone to fire and more fire resistant. Is that true? Not universal. Help me with that, please. No, not universal. A lot of things, and you'll hear, uh, you, you do not remove tag in case of penalty of law, right? So right. you take off that tag first thing you do when you get home. <laughs> well, that tag will often say that it's built to the California standard. A lot of times California is very progressive in some of their standards and they have some sort of fire prevention quality. But there are some French companies that will do that and they'll apply a, a spray on the material to make them fire retardant. 
We're also finding now, we've discussed this at length before about um, carcinogens for the firefighters. When those chemicals that are sprayed on the furniture burn, they're actually releasing so much in the way of carcinogens that it's actually even worse for the exposure for the firefighters. And they're getting it transdermally, getting it through their skin. So it, it's a terrible thing in some respects. What about mattresses? Same. Beds. Beds yeah, the same. And now if you look and, and you see some of the Tempur-Pedics and the, their polyurethane foams, um, and again, not the... We, we could say bubble pedic, okay, Mr. Jones. It doesn't have to be the same name brand. But at the end of the day, that, that polyurethane foam burns with rapidity. So they, they give off toxic fumes, and that those that smoke, aerosol and gases are fuel. And once they get to the right temperature, combined with oxygen, that's all fuel now. So the entire structure will be filled with that. Which 30 years ago, 35 years ago, wasn't the case. The wool and the cotton that was burning was not the case. It's almost like if you go back 40 years, 50 years, people had aluminum siding. Sure. And then eventually you don't want aluminum siding because it kept in the heat and the house would go up quicker. So now plastic siding melts. Correct. So it doesn't burn as quickly to the house and gives you a better chance for the fire department to help you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Yeah. Mr. Platt. If I understood you, Chief, you said about 90% of your work now is EMS? A tremendous amount of our workload is definitely EMS, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. And as you know, we're also responding with the fire engine on, yeah. on severe EMS calls, mm -hmm. right? And there are m more occasions now when you have to call for mutual aid for EMS than there were 10 or 15 years ago? Yes. Yeah. And what's the approximate time for an out-of-town ambulance to get to the location of the need versus your ambulance? Well, it depends on the location in town. So, uh, generally speaking, if we're dealing with the west side of town, the, the fire alarm operator may select uh, Exeter Ambulance. Mm -hmm. Northampton is our most frequent, <coughs> Seabrook. So, we're, we're certainly looking at that. It's time travel from their fire um, station. Mm -hmm. However, as represented, in, and it happens too, where we had a, a box alarm this week, or a transmitted box, uh, smoke in the building. Galley Hatch had a, a small <coughs> situation, and there was another one down on Epping Ave. In doing so, when it was the Epping Ave call, I believe, where everybody went. To, to work as fire suppression to Epping Ave. In the meantime, two ambulance calls came in. One was a Northampton ambulance and one was a Seabrook ambulance. Both transported to the hospital. Our fire units were still on scene. Both ambulances from our surrounding communities transported to the hospitals. When we went back in service and came back to the fire station, <coughs> Northampton had a call. So our companies had to go to Northampton and transport. Yeah. So, uh, Is it reasonable to say that if someone needed an ambulance, the service is more likely to more, be more quickly provided if we do it in town versus calling for mutual aid. I would say that is absolutely reasonable to say, yes, sir. And is it fair to say also the beach alone has had like $250 million worth of development in the last decade, and the rest of the town has had significant, significant. development? So it would seem to me this is really, do we want to spend the money to protect our, our health primarily Everyone agrees you have a marvelous EMS group. I agree. And the technology of those ambulances is incredible. You're, you're almost like a drive-in mini hospital. I or emergency completely hospital. agree. And the technology that we're bringing to the patient is, is bar not. I mean, it's, it's the highest it's ever been right now. And we continue with your assistance and with the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager's assistance, we continue to explore that and then keep exceeding the bar. We keep raising the bar and then exceeding it because we're buying the new equipment that's going to bring the best possible care to the patient. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Walbert. Chief Ayotte. Yes, sir. Back in April when you came here, do you remember what I said or April? asked you then when we talked about or April or May when we talked about the priorities the fire department and what was certainly myself, what was my big thing that we talked about at that time? You're going to have to refresh my memory, sir. Turnout here. Sure. Okay. I also said that that's going to be a big expense, right? And right. so when we prioritize things, and that's why I'm so proud to see that I think we're going to get a lot of support for that because that's a, necess a much needed part of the job. To my friend Bob Vlad's point, Bob, it doesn't matter if you have four more firefighters, you still only have a certain amount of ambulances, so that really is, doesn't correlate. It there does. Has been, it well, does. Well, it does, but hold well, on well, well, if you're going to bring that point up, let me say okay. that currently on a fire engine, we respond with three, I okay? On an ambulance, they respond with two. If the first ambulance transports or goes out, that second ambulance takes the two firefighters from the engine. Mm -hmm. So if I have a staffed up appropriate staffing level, the second ambulance can be taken out without stripping the engine 
for personnel. Mm -hmm. It takes personnel, not just ambulances, to do the job. So several of your men are very close friends of mine. Not okay. once have they said to me, boy, I feel this town's been in danger. Well, of course not. Well, no, but that's, a, that's an important point, though. Right. The other thing we asked, or I asked, and to the chairman's point, which was very eloquent, and the great chairman he's done this year back, your comment about do we need this. I, I asked so that the voters know the real cost. Why didn't we have a warrant article? Put it right out there. We want four or five fighters. The heck with these grants. We see what happens with grants. Okay, then you incorporate them. And three years from now, who knows? If the voters really want and we need four new firefighters, I think the justification has to be more than just what we talked about. And you've referenced a lot tonight, mutual aid. It goes both ways. We help towns. What's wrong with they didn't help us? If I asked anybody at this table at 1999 at the fire of the old Saul, you know who took care of a lot of that fire? Stratum and the call firefighters. So you got I think we've got to be careful that then there's nobody more. I mean, half my family's firefighters, teachers, and police. So I'm going to put that right out there right now. There's nobody more supportive. But I've got to be careful too when I'm representing the taxpayers that we can't just throw stuff out there every year. And I applaud you for fighting for your department. I, I like that in a person, and good for you. But we, we, we said this before, and to talk all of a sudden now with saying, OK, we're going to try to get a safer grant. I don't know what's going to happen with the Federal Homeland Security. Who knows the way this country's going right now? But my point is, you admitted tonight, most of your thing, let's say 80%, my is ambulance, right? I'm not admitting anything. Okay. I'm telling you facts. Right. No, no. All right. No, yeah. I'm saying that I used 80 percent. You didn't. Sure. <coughs> Very few fires in the last 15 years, and the two fires two have been reduced. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You have currently 40 firefighters, correct? No. 39. I have 36. That includes my officers. So there are 28 okay, firefighters. Right. There are eight officers. You have four okay. captains. Correct. And four lieutenants. Correct. Okay. So. And you've also came to the board, which they have a right to do on a bottom line budget, when you needed that overtime money, right? In the summertime, mm -hmm. you came, and I appreciate it. I watch all the meetings. That worked out well, too, right? It certainly did. So we're back at, at square one. And I guess, going back to your point, way back with a totally different subject with the planning, the master plan, but somewhat related, we have got to be awful sure that asking the public for four additional firefighters at this day and age, when we've actually had a pretty darn good track record of the great fire department we have now, and your point is well taken. I don't know how you go from great any more than great. We said it about our police department. We said it about our public works. We said it about town hall, our rec department, on and on. But I'm going to make one more comment, and I want to make it very clear today, and this is, doesn't matter what party you belong to. But Governor Sununu, in his inaugural today, he said it's, all, it's not always about throwing more money at something. We may, and sorry lieutenants and captains that are friends of mine, we may have to start looking at how we do fire business. We, we, it may, it's not the same. You just alluded to the master plan that Jason wants. Absolutely it's related because, we, and to somebody say the old way of thinking, We've got to start thinking outside the box. We can't keep having costs go up and up and up. How do we say to the taxpayers, okay, well, because we had 20 more runs or we had this and that, and I'm saying this, okay, because I need to feel good about supporting. I am absolutely 150% of support of the turnout gear. That's part of their job, and we need, never mind the second turnout, just the whole gear in general. But we've got to be careful when we're just putting out there, you use the word, Three times tonight, you have, tr I think you used the word, you pushed, you've tried to get these other positions. I will bring you back to 10, 12 years ago when there was a warrant article for four positions, and then there were four positions in the budget. So, I wasn't not, here 10 years ago. No, I understand that. But his, history means a lot, and I've got to feel comfortable that is it absolutely necessary? Because if you say to me, we're going to decrease overtime by 30%. I you know what? I might be interested. I might safety be interested. Of the firefighters, and I believe it's necessary for the safety of the community, and that's my primary job. My secondary job, not less important, is a fiduciary responsibility to the to the community. So the reason that I'm asking for this safer grant is to your point, and I think you made it for me, 
is that we don't necessarily want to fund 100% for firefighters if we can avoid it. And the federal government is giving the opportunity to pay 75% of the freight for two years and then 35% in the third year. I think that it would be irresponsible not to take the federal government up on that offer. But here's the point, and you said it again, and I'm glad we're on TV. Me too. 75% <laughs> of 100 leaves 25%. That's true. So if we take 25% from the fire department, 25 from public works, 25 from the police, all this money that adds up to the taxpayers. That's why I go back to my original subject, and I, and I said it to Selectman Barnes, too, and I watched the meetings. I would have felt better, whether I'm for it or not, if we just right out said four fires, the heck with all this other misleading. And, and it's not misleading to the sense that, and we're going to deal with this next week with, with Frank's school. I mean, we've got a real big issue next week on a, 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 a position that was funded for a year out of grant. Now they're going to come back as a new position. So it may or may not fly. That's what I'm saying. I'm very supportive, and I appreciate your reports. I appreciate your management. But we've got to take a step back here, and maybe how are we doing fire business in 2019, just as like we talked about everything else. Your point about, you know, and, and we said earlier about turnout gear, you made a great presentation on that, and we pushed you on it. We said it's got to be done, and we're doing it. And so, and we're taking the money out, and I think it's going to be a, a big vote for that. But as far as this goes, I'm not feeling the pulse, and I feel a pulse of the community. Listen, I passed a lot of contracts. I was involved, as Mr. Sullivan said earlier, we worked together years ago. I'm not feeling it. And I, I'm telling you, I'm not feeling it. We can't keep saying, well, you said you tell us, that's the town you feel very safe. The top taxpayers should feel safe. You said it when you had your deputy in here. The taxpayers should be, feel safe. We've got a great department. You've got the greatest men and women. I know all of them. They are terrific. But adding more people to what is already an over, over bulge, bulging budget and I might add, and I might add, once again, and it's no deference to Mr. Welch because he's worked hard and stuff, but he said himself in two occasions in the last month, the, in the next two years, your taxes are going to see a bulge. And all I'm saying is we can't just, this is one of many articles. I've said my piece. I'm very in favor of what the fire department does. To the chairman's point, and the chairman more than, Many others in this town has done his homework through the years, and I really appreciate it. And what you folks have done, and what you currently do, and how much that really is going to change by adding four new people. And I, I, I just think we need to take a step back. So I, that's all I'm going to say on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? No, my my main concern is not the first year appropriation, or the second year appropriation, the third year appropriation. It's actually, four, five, and six that's right. future years where we're paying the full boat. Um, I think we have a, a duty to be sensitive to not just next year, but subsequent years. In terms of the effect of what we're recommending. Um, do you, uh, just a question, do you anticipate that the growth will stop? I anticipate that as the growth increases, that the uh, safer standards will be applied to them and we'll have less of a fire issue. I think the argument for four additional personnel in this department probably carries more weight from the EMT point of view. But there, you, you, need, you have to understand that right. all of my personnel perform those I do, functions I as do, well. I do understand. So there, you know, on any given day, they may be firefighter on the engine or they mm -hmm. may be on the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So this would increase that as well. I, I, I acknowledge that. And I'm not saying that it's sufficiently justified. And, and I don't EMT. have... I'm I, only saying the argument sounds stronger sure. to me doesn't mean it wins the day with me. Understood. Okay. But just in a general perspective, too, and this is not a hard number, this is, this is uh, it's very difficult data to always get when you're talking about what calls came in, what were the billing, because if a mutual aid ambulance comes, it may be BLS, it may be ALS. Okay, so if it's a BLS call, then it's billed at a lesser rate. If it's an ALS call, it's billed. If we're looking at that, then if an ambulance is transporting somebody and it's at an ALS rate, we're charging about, I believe it's, and not including mileage, it's uh, $1,079 per ALS run and we're significantly lower than many other communities. If they're charging more than that, they're creating, they're generating that revenue for themselves by transporting our patients. This is potentially a revenue loss, if you want to look at it from that perspective, by not being able to transport our own patients from the EMT side of the world. Yeah, on the same time, we could, if the Board of Selectmen chose to charge more, we could well, actually have increased revenue on their decision alone. Right? And, and then there's also a balance, too, on unpaid bills <coughs> and whether or not that <coughs> needs to be written off. Yeah, yeah. So, what, what I'm telling you right now is that it's my strong recommendation to, to, to be sure that going after this safer grant 
would provide for the safety of the firefighters and the safety of the community and would allow us to perform a better service. Well, I'm just telling you that I would look, I would look uh, less uh, um, suspicious if the word grant wasn't here. It was just funded based on what we need. That's right. When we throw the word grant in there, it's like it's suggesting to people that it's free money and it's really not. That's right. Especially as you go further out into the years. So it makes me more <coughs> sensitive to the argument. That's pretty much what I was saying or trying to say. Um, is there anybody else seeing none? Are we ready to vote? Well, I would well, like to ask a question, Regina. actually. I've gotten the information that shows the comparison over the next three years, because we don't have anything past that. The grant would be three years, and we actually had a Warren article that showed the total cost Correct. if we didn't do anything for a grant. So we're going to save for the first two years 75%, correct, if the federal government accepts correct. the grant, and then what's the last year? 35-65. Uh, so they'll, they'll pay 35% of the salaries and benefits. These additional four hires, will this allow the fire department to man an engine and an ambulance, both the beach station and the fire station? So let's qualify that yes on a 10 person day. Right, so, but you would run down to nine. Right now if you run, run down, down to nine, then we're at where we would be right now at full On every day. Correct. If we run at full right staff, now you right run now we run down, down to eight. eight. Right? So if we run to nine, full staffing does not bring an ambulance to the beach. Ten does. Okay, so we have more down the beach. We have bigger buildings. We have more of them. That's my highest fire hazard, for sure. I've talked to the chief several times, not during this time of year, not during budget season, and he has concern, the development of the town, the increase to what we built, and the lack of what we invested, and not just the fire department, in my view, but in a lot of different areas of the town. We had two options here. We could have gone with the SAFER grant, which a grant obviously is gonna run out, that's what they do. I think it will be very easy enough that if the firefighters were willing to do so, to explain to the public, which I would hope that, you know, if anyone is very concerned that this Warren article gets passed, that they will explain what will, you know, what will happen if it does get passed, what will happen if it doesn't get passed. It's very explicit. It says three years. Now, I received a document that actually showed the breakout and it actually should com show the comparison if we just decided to do this. You come to us as if you're doing now saying that you would feel more comfortable, it would be better for the department, it would be better for the town if we had dashed, if we um, employed an additional four people. To me, this is an option. We can either do it this way or we can just do the four. This is our fire chief telling us this. I've talked to him on several times about it. So maybe if we could get a little bit more backup information, which I think will help w with what you're saying, we're not just throwing grant in there so that it sounds good, but it's an opportunity for us to save money in the first three years. Mm -hmm. So maybe if it was sold like that, I don't like using that word sold, but <coughs> if we portray that to the voters, that would make everyone feel a little bit better. Yeah, opinion. I apparently gave the wrong impression when I say the word grant, I become more suspicious. I mean, I was aware of the other Warren article. And right. of course, if I were given the choice of advancing one or the other, it would be this one that I would advance because of the existence of the grant. But still, the need for the, for the four additional personnel has not been established in my mind yet. Um, and that's where I was coming from because we sort of granted and we have talking about grant rather than the actual need right uh, and that's that's where I was coming from in that it wasn't suggesting that we shouldn't have moved this one forward actually I would think this would be the better one to move forward but I'd rather the discussion be on determining that we actually have a need for this additional personnel uh, I know once we get them it's going to be very difficult didn't we lose our was it Barrington that eliminated uh, four firefighters back in 2005, wasn't it? 2005, but let me remind Hampton everybody. did as well then. Pardon? Hampton also had layoffs at that same time. Well, oh, no, but no, the point is, is that that was a big, hot political year. It caused a lot of upset all over the place. In this community as well. Yeah, and, and, and the Hampton v. Sullivan case was born out of that, remember? Gilligan, but Which the school resource offices were started as grants. Yeah. And all I'm saying is skyrocket. Now you're looking at 340-something thousand, whatever, just, I mean, they're putting it through. I, whether you call it a grant or whether you do it, and you hit on another good point. 
even if we went this route, which I'm not in favor of this route, you, you, you think anybody's in a community after three years say, oh, we're, gonna, we're not going to have those firefighters anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the that's point. Right. And I think that we've got to, we, we've really got to sit back and talk about staffing and, you know, you could, we could develop to 30,000 people. Does that mean we're going to want 20 more people? I mean, I think you gotta. I think you gotta be a little clearer. Not, not you. I'm saying collectively. Well, it is me because I am the fire chief All right, right now. Well, one of the uh, questions that you asked was whether or not the the population had changed. We can't tell, and let me tell you why we can't tell. Because the 2010 census said we had 14,976 people. It's 2019, and we haven't seen a new census since then. I, I imagine. Over 15,000 right now. What's that? 15,100 something well, that's 2017 census. So, yeah, so, but the, the actual... Didn't the, grow anything. Right. Yeah. But when we look at this, the, the property that we're protecting, too, has grown by 1.4 million square feet. Imagine that all of that needs to be protected. When I say that, this is, these are not all sprinkler buildings. One and two family homes don't come under that. We still fight fires in one and two family homes. They're not sprinkler. They don't have fire codes that we enforce because by state law, we don't have purview there. So we're still fighting fires in buildings that haven't been sprinkled, that haven't been rendered to the safer level of, of the code, and we don't have purview by state law. So how do we justify that? These communities are growing too, and I can point to the names of the roads, uh, not, to, not the least of which is we're looking to put in several more over on Timber Swamp. This, these communities are growing too, and it's not just the sprinkled buildings, the, the larger condos that we might see on Ashworth Ave or on Ocean Boulevard. It's all across the board, from east to west, this community's grown. The number you cite in terms of how much um, we've grown, grown in terms of property value at the beach, uh, I don't think is... So I didn't bring up value. Chief Sawyer did that in a Board of Selectmen meeting, and, I, and I'll explain it to you why... You said 1.1 million. No, that's square feet. Square so, feet. so okay. listen, at the end of the day... So that additional square feet, I don't yes. think, was driven by one and two family buildings. It was actually driven by the high rises, it's wasn't it? Driven by all of them. Correct. All of them. Had. Well, what was the primary sure. driver? We should Everything. ask our former assessor. Mr. Tinker assisted yeah. me in getting the numbers, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but at the end of the day, from Boar's Head to the bridge, in ten years, in, in uh, seven years' time, there was two hundred sixty million dollars worth of construction. Okay, and as I stated in front of the board of selectmen, firefighters really don't care how much people spend on construction because at the end of the day, whether it's so worth a lot of money or not a lot of yeah, money, exactly. we're still going to fight the fire. If somebody's trapped inside and it's a building that's not worth 50 bucks, we're still going to go get that person. If the building's $150,000, we're going to go get that person. If it's a million dollar home, I got it. we're going to get it. the right. But the issue is, but the you issue have to is, understand, if we're going to do that, right, on a bigger building, we need more personnel to be able to perform the job. Well, you see, that's what my concern is because, as you know, I've mentioned relative to the master plan, them ignoring the uh, maintenance of low profile buildings. And every proposal that came out of exceeding the height requirements mm -hmm. had public safety people come in, including the fire chief, assessing what kind of risk factor exceeding that height limit might pose. And the answer to from everyone was, oh, that's nothing, nothing at all. There's no, there's no risk factor here at all. I have never said it was nothing, and, and I haven't been represented on that as far as those committees go. Oh, well, no, I wasn't talking about committees. Okay. I was talking about the actual meetings at the planning boards. Uh, when the question was posed, if we put in this 70-foot building, uh, would you be able to handle that without any additional uh, expense or so forth? And the answer was, a, you know, we can handle that. We're great fire department and all that stuff. And so that's, that's how things went on for project after project. And ultimately, when we raised the building zoning requirement or minimum or maximum height, uh, the same question was put out. And it was like, okay, no issue. And so now what I'm hearing you say is, well, with all that growth, which I believe most of that per square, uh, square foot growth was driven by the high rises. It wasn't driven by one or two family buildings. Uh, it was driven consider by the high rises. What that is, right, but Primarily. let's consider what that is, right? What, what has been replaced? Several one-story structures that used to be seasonal only are now replaced with three and four-story structures that are year-round residences. So that changes things quite a bit. If there's no fire risk, and I'm not going to say no, let's say if there's a reduced fire risk because that building is sprinklered and it's up to fire code, right, and we can all agree that it would be reduced, there's still people living there who potentially will have medical issues that we have to go transport. Yeah. So as that continues to rise, we need people to do the job. It's no, as really, I said, that's I think really the argument that sounds stronger from the ENT than the fire. So but because but I they're perceive, the same people. I perceive fire risk to be drastically lower uh, than it was. Yeah. Pick a point in time, and the answer I think is the statement is still true. And I would concur that in, in the, the new building side that we, we see that's actually forced. increasing. Yeah. 
all um, the time. And part of it's been driven by the aging of our population. Absolutely. Part of it's being driven by um, uh, uh, medical technology itself. Sure, people right. live longer. Well, I mean, also like the drug use and the Narcan and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And we, that's uh, a race nobody wants to win. I keep saying that too, and unfortunately, we're we're playing it. Right. So, again, I don't see this as, as primarily a fire fighting <coughs> risk factor here. I see it more as an EMT thing here, but it's being presented as though it were firefighters pr primarily. And so I'm just seeing it differently than what's being presented as. And, uh, and I understand your point, Mr. Jones, but at, at the end of the day, the personnel that are doing the job, whether it's firefighting or EMT, by adding four, no, by I giving one per that. group, I do will increase that. our ability to provide service. Any, Mr. Morrow. Chief, um, end of the paragraph, this article shall be null and void if the federal funding is not approved or received. I would hope a personal perspective that next year you would put it on a warrant article for the full five fighters if this doesn't pass and then add some of the things because what I heard you talk about a few months back was the opioid endemic mm -hmm. which is in New Hampshire out of control along with across the country you win number one and I would think that your ambulances would be a lot more I would almost think you need an extra ambulance based upon the retirements where they just want one app Simultaneous calls. Absolutely. And how many people are in an ambulance? I thought of you. You had the driver who was an EMT and another EMT. There's also a fireman? No, there are two, generally speaking. Right. Um, there's a, a driver and a tech, so they'll work on the patient in the back. Right. If they're going out of town so that both of our personnel can be the same in the back working on the patient, we'll send three, which means that they'll have a driver and then two of our personnel so will work. So they had to go to seats. Seabrook or correct. Northampton or That's something correct. of that nature. Then we send all of our personnel out that way so that they're able to provide that service right. so that they know who they're working with in the back, whoever it might be. I'm Additionally, if we're, if we're transporting somebody cardiac arrest, if we're transporting somebody in congestive heart failure, they may take from the engine, so they may take three to the hospital or four, and it's happened recently where we've had some very sick people, and four people transport to the hospital, which means that our engine is returning out of service because it's the captain or lieutenant driving the engine back. At the okay. same time... Are the firemen totally trained in EMT work? My yes. interpretation was it sounds like they've, they've all got the same they do. quality of skills. All qualified. Correct. Yeah. All so qualified. our lowest level at this point for the for service providers is advanced EMT and paramedic, right, is the next highest level. Um, there are two or three officers that have reduced their to basic EMT, which is now just classified as EMT. But everybody else who's providing patient care is an advanced EMT or a paramedic. That's amazing. And we need to maintain that standard and move forward. Uh, and you you all said there? No. Okay. They also need training. Continuous. Is there continuous training for these EMTs? Absolutely. I would think there would be, is my thoughts. As medicine progresses and changes. Yeah. So how many days a year do they generally go to refresher, if not new school? So um, for, med uh, yeah, for emergency medical certifications, their certification is renewable every two years. So refreshers every two years, um, and we have it now. The EMS officer, Nate Denio, has done a tremendous job of cycling it. So approximately 50% of the department does it one year and 50% the next year, okay? Um, in doing so, it's approximately 40-ish hours. The National Registry for EMTs has changed the curriculum so that it's not in classroom 48 hours like it used to be. Instead, now there's a lot of blended learning. There's other methods to bring that education. We do a lot in-house already. Um, so we're providing that training as it stands. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. All set, David? Yes, sir. Mr. LeBranch. Sir. Chief. Okay, is um, having four, four additional firefighters, EMTs, having that one extra person on each of those shifts? Okay, so you've got two people, you've got four shifts a day. Correct. Two up and four shifts. Two downtown. Uh, two down at the beach. I'm sorry? You have four shifts you're covering. Two at the station, two at the other. No, sir. So we have four groups. And each group works a 24-hour period, has a period of time off, 24-hour period, and time off. Okay. So each of those four groups will have one additional person. Okay. And as the chief, you're recommending this. I am. You're the, you're the professional. But the, I guess the question I have is that kind of goes to Brian. 
and his friends and family and stuff. Right now, when you need extra people, you immediately tone out Correct. for off-duty policemen, I mean uh, by EMTs, to come in. This and is a joke to be made about the test I took, sir. <laughs> and they come in for uh, a certain amount of time. Correct. The, the, is it four, three hours? Two again? hours. Two hours, okay. If they aren't needed, then after two hours they go back. Uh, but they're coming in and perhaps they're on overtime. Yes. Okay. And I guess the point I'm going to make is that if I was, I'm not the chief, I'm a firefighter, and I, I kind of like that over time, okay? And bringing, having another person, having four people, might actually affect my pay Sorry. over a period of a year. I'm just, I mean, how do the men feel about this? Do you, can you honestly say that all your firefighters would say, I'm going to be so happy to lose overtime? I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just pointing out a perspective. Understood. Okay, that, Good that to me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at the big picture here. That's Do you have a sense, Chief, of how your firefighters feel about losing overtime? Well, I don't think anybody would be happy about losing overtime pay. Okay, but I you. think that at the end of the day, that they're going to enjoy having that safety factor of another person. All set, Steve? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. One more. Mr. Ladd. If I might draw an analogy, Chief, I would consider your ambulance a, a, an emergency room with tires. And if I could take the analogy a step further and say, make it a hospital emergency room, and the hospital emergency room has the same staffing it had 10 years ago, but the number of patients coming to that room has doubled or tripled. Does that not compromise the ability to appropriately provide the necessary medical care. And to me, the, the need is for the man, the saver grant is just a nice Christmas present to help pay for what is otherwise a need. And I wouldn't want to need your ambulance in my house and find out all the ambulances were in service and the ambulance from the abutting towns will take an extra number of minutes depending on time of year and traffic flows which may affect the medical outcome it's just too much to pay Mr. Moore. Never need it, sir. you all said something? Yep. No. Mr. Moore. One final one I'd like to, the question the overtime this might be helpful I think that hopefully what I'm saying is positive how much do you pay in overtime approximately at the end of the year could you ballpark it uh, off the top of my head, no, but I can tell you that we've overspent vacation this year. We've overspent fire callback. We've underspent. Well, we're going um, with that. Don't yeah. I can say, well, Four, I know it's not $10, million. and I no. know it's not $10 million, so maybe right. somewhere in the between. Right. But if you have these four people, I'm going to make this story up. You can eliminate overtime because they fill in the overtime. The amount of money you save in overtime. Callback. Pay, callback might easily, I'm making this up pay for at least one, two, three, or maybe all four people. So we're not really paying for four new firemen because you're saving the overtime. So you, rather than spending $400,000 over here, I'm exaggerating. I'm, with you. Yeah, I'm totally understanding. And it costs $500,000 for the four new guys, I'm exaggerating. We just say $400,000 and for, for, in, in for the, the, the differential, it's almost something we can't afford not to do. And in addition to that, sir, I would also say that if there is an ambulance transport to be performed by our own personnel, yeah. then that's revenue that we would collect. Right. So it's almost, it could wash. Could no. you maybe... I can't project that far. No. I don't know because calls vary, but... Well, couldn't you look at last year's overtime pay? Did you have that? You Even that. still, I wouldn't be able to reference it with the additional staff because we weren't at 10. So it would be, again, it would be theorizing. And not not necessarily saying okay. Well, what if I would have been able to staff this ambulance, that ambulance? There's no there's no documentation of how many times that ambulance went out and left the captain alone to you know what I mean the cross pollination. So I would think I would think looking at their checks, they're going to have an overtime thing in their check. How much money it was and if it's confusing, for firefighters? You, certainly, you, you could add I can tell you the number. Yeah, together, absolutely. And you could come up with that amount easily with right. a, the right computer. You can write the program for the checks. You can be shot. Okay, we're all set. Now, along so. with that, if you had that, that would help sell whatever you want to do or whatever. Explain to the 
to the uh, taxpayers, including me, it's not really going to cost this much money. It's really going to cost this, but it might even be a wash. I Look, think looking back at last year, and again, like I said, it, it depends on what other ambulances are, are billing yeah, for it, good. but we're looking at about $42,000. If it was all ALS runs last year, about $42,000 went to other communities. Right. Okay. okay, we're all set? No. <laughs> I'm all set, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I think saying, everybody the is. The regular five more, that more. worked overtime, and they're not the ambulance. It's the regular five that worked overtime. You had to pay them. It's in a bucket somewhere, and we paid for it. Correct. If you could come up with fill the bucket or put into thing of going forward, how much you were actually putting into overtime per week or per month, you'd have a figure at the end of the year. So you'd have a figure to help sell us. Well, we got four hundred thousand dollars last year. We paid in overtime. If we had these four people, we wouldn't have that. We would have had no overtime. I'm making that example. I understand. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Thank you, sir. You got it. You'll find it in the budget books. Um, <laughs> I think everyone is all set. Correct in terms of I, one final thing. We do fire insurance companies do ratings on towns, right? ISO. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And. The town's fire rating has not changed in, in your memory, is that correct? It, it, uh, it changed, I believe I was a second year deputy, so probably about 2013, it changed to 33Y, which has a, a, a rating that used to be, there was, a, there was another uh, letter and numbering scheme, but um, ISO changed their, their mechanism and schedule for that. Um, that's based on hydrant availability, it's based on personnel, ability to apply water, uh, distance to hydrants, and number of, of um, engines, things like that. It's a whole complex right, system. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so yeah. that hasn't changed, I think, since 2013. It might be 20. But that's, that's revisited annually, isn't it? Uh, no, I believe it's every seven. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me, but I thought it was every seven. Because this could, could have an impact, because it's yeah. part of the formula. It, it certainly could. Yeah. And so Absolutely. it could have a positive impact Absolutely relative agree. to homeowners insurance, or, or rather property Business insurance, insurance too, in general. Sure. Property what insurance in general. Bad. Um, but that might not actually right. take effect for seven years. We just I don't, don't know yet. Yeah. I'll, date, I'll, I'll think, right? research that for you. Thank you. There are positive things to this. I don't want to dispute that. Uh, I'm just inclined to say, uh, well, with everything else in the picture, mm -hmm. um, I think mm, it's a tough one for me. It really is. I'm not 100% certain in my opinion on this. But I think everyone has ready to vote unless you want to delay the vote. Uh, are we ready to vote, guys? Yeah. Okay. All those who wish to recommend... Uh, via the LeBranch motion to recommend. Uh, okay, we have uh, everyone except uh, Warburton and myself. Mm -hmm. And Warburton is voting. I'm voting no. And I am Six, thoroughly abstaining because I really don't. I'm on the fence. I just can't get off of it. That motion was LeBranch's uh, second by uh, uh, Vice Chairman. <laughs> and that was 6 2, right? Yes. Or oh, rather, 611. Anything further? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Next, we have Charlene to talk about reevaluation re of property. No, you have. Well, we asked Charlene to come. <laughs> and look who showed up. So, Charlene, if you <laughs> join us. <laughs> <coughs> Charlene couldn't make it. Oh. Paul McKinney. So you guys want to delay until Charlene can come or what? Tim, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I had Well, hey, I didn't ask for her. You guys did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you heard our, our last meeting. Is that right, uh, Ed? I was informed that you needed a little more information. Welcome back your to your former employer, by the way. Good to see you and all that stuff. Nice to see you. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Uh, you saw that video? I didn't see meeting. the video. You did? Just okay. So I guess we're going to have to restate our concerns, if any, on this. Anybody want to, sp want to speak on the uh, revaluation? More an article. Seeing none, I guess you're all ready to vote. Is that right? Yep. Okay. All those who want to uh, recommend this uh, Warren article, raise your hand. And all those opposed? I abstain. Abstain. So that would be six one one on LeBranch's motion, seconded by Mr. Pluff. You know, just a point of order. Sure. There was some discussion because. No, there wasn't because you guys didn't want it. No, no, no. I'm not talking about now. 
when we talked about this last week, yeah, what was, I, know. I don't remember what it was because yeah. I didn't ask any well, questions. Apparently nobody right? else does either because no one wanted <laughs> okay. to discuss it. All so right. we voted and we'll move well, on. Thank you for coming. Can I ask a question? Regina, we're done with this. We're done. <coughs> we're done. Thanks for wasting time. We voted on it 6 one one Do you know that? If you want to ask a question, you can. Yes. <laughs> the reason why we're having a revaluation before the five years is up. Is there a specific reason for that? Uh, just just the, uh, the increase in market, the market sales. And also the, the equalization ratio? Well, that, that's the result yeah. of it. The right. equalization so ratio yeah, has dropped below 90%. And that's a state requirement? To be within 90 to 110%. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ed, for coming in. Thank you, Ed. Nice thank to see you. You got stood the pressure. Nice yeah. moving on. <laughs> well, it's his well, we saw you before, what? You, yeah, <laughs> right. So, thank you very much. I was the no. Uh, Mr. Frank was the That's I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome. Well thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Okay. That's a nice way to put it. Did you do a lot of <laughs> unpermitted work? Hey, I don't believe we just had one. And he's saying property values went up, but I'm saying when did they All go right. up? All right. We're, we're moving on to part time code enforcement yeah. officer. Does anyone want to speak in favor of this? The inspector can't be here. So no one wants to speak in favor of it, enough to be here anyway. Uh, what, do we, what, what does the body want to do with this? Let's you want to vote on it? it? I want to vote. I'm ready to vote. I, my position hasn't changed since the last time. Mr. Walburton's moving to recommend. Mr. No, I'm not <laughs> recommending it. Excuse me. Mr. Plough is moving to recommend, and Mr. Ladd He's not recommending I, it either. Well, we need I'm a motion moving. for correction. I'll make the motion to recommend. Thank you, Mr. Frank. You and Mr. Ladd is seconding Second. it? Yeah. Very cooperative from the... Representatives, I appreciate that help. Okay, so we're ready to vote. All those in favor of recommending this, please raise your hand. One is recommending that, Barbara, and that would be Mr. Ladd. All those opposed, please raise your hand. And that would be everyone else. Mr. Blanche ran off to the bathroom, so he, he's not voting at all. Too much input. He abstained. Are you abstaining, Frank? No, no. Mr. Brand, because he's not here to vote. No, one way or another. he didn't vote. Okay. So it was one in favor, yep. and six opposed, right? Six. Yeah, I can't see anything. All right, so that's now it's recorded in our magical database here. Okay. You want to go with another one? How about Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund? I'll make a motion that we approve. You mean recommend? I recommend. Second. Okay, you got that, Barbara? Okay, any discussion or questions on the Road Capital Reserve Fund? Seeing none, are you guys ready to vote? Yep. Yes. All those in favor of the Road Capital Reserve Fund? Thank you. It is unanimous, Barbara. That would be now 8 0. Okay, now we're moving on to. Uh, Purchase of replacement vehicles for DPW. I assume DPW has been like they sufficiently entertained and now, now they want to come and participate, right? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. You don't need to or you don't want to. I mean, maybe it's not worthy of that. Because you don't know. Okay, do we have a motion on this one, Mr. Branch? To take I'll make a, a motion. By Mr. DeLuca, you got that, Barbara? Mm -hmm. Any discussion or questions on this? Right. Warren article, which like is on your screen. Public. What was that, Regina? No, if he has a question, I'll yield to Mr. Wolf. Did you want to have them present first? Right, there you, go. you have a question, Mr. Uh, a well, statement. no, a, a statement. Okay. Um, I think we're going down the wrong road. I, I actually am for this, but I'm not for <laughs> the way it's written. I think taking this, all this stuff on the unassigned fund balance is getting out of control. And I think if the voters really want it, budget it and add it to the taxes. Um, I, I'm not going to be for this the way it's written right now. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Morrow? I think this is repeats of what I was bringing up last week, is the fact that I'm not necessarily against this, but I'm against the fact that this is no tax impact, and we were going right. to look to somebody to make it clearer for the Got it. people, because we stop shaking the head up. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'll do it this way. Then. <laughs> <laughs> He looks fun at doing it that way. <laughs> so anyway, you're a lateral bobblehead. 
I assume, or hopefully, within the next year, the wording could be more explanative and exactly what this is, because it is a tax imp All of these things, not this article, I'll just say that they're, they're an impact because it either came from prior taxes, but once the slush funds get worked down, taxpayers have to redo the slush fund. So it's not free, everything <laughs> saying these words. Just stop taking it out of that fund. That's what I'm saying. It's a bad Hold fund. Mr. LeBranch. We're not supposed to be using it for that. I so watched taxes. your presentation to the selectmen. My understanding is that the one ton dump truck is basically decommissioned. Um, and the two three quarter ton trucks with plows have rusted frames. And the two sidewalk maintenance vehicles, um, you can't, they're, they're, a machine that both of them uh, is a lot of expense and and they're not made anymore that particular model or something like that and if I'm and correct me if I'm wrong the idea is to get a vehicle like a the two two would be like uh, bobcats that would have a snowblower attachment on the front and then they could be used off season to uh, put up do other things does that sound about right it does would you can I handle it one vehicle at a time? Uh, go, please. I'm okay. just doing the overview. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, Unit 16 is one of the pick three-quarter ton pickup trucks that we have. It was uh, it's a 2004. Its original, original cost was 18000 The last time the board uh, met, I thought there were some questions as to what the maintenance has been on, on a vehicle like that. Why do we want to replace it? Um, we've spent, since 2004, $27,481 re repairing and maintaining an $18,000 vehicle. Or in other words, we spent 152,000, 152% of its original purchase price maintaining it. I don't, from a fiscal uh, perspective, I don't think that's a wise thing for the department to continue with, period. Um, unit 26, original, that is another three quarter ton pickup truck, but one that we actually use for plowing, so it's a little heavier. Um, we've spent a total since 2005, uh, $12,299 repairing that particular vehicle, or half of its original purchase price. Um, yes, both of these are suffering um, frame issues, um, but we're also seeing a huge uptick, particularly in this 26, just this last year alone, it was $6,000. To, to repair these vehicles. So um, I've always felt that there's a certain curve, if you will, and when a vehicle starts to really uh, cost the town a lot more money to maintain and keep on the road than it's, than it's worth or what it was originally worth, it's time to look at replacing that, that vehicle. Or um, in the other vehicle that you talked about, the one-ton truck, um, the frame is rotted out on that. I have a deadline that it was uh, somewhere around a $6,000 increase, but we're way up uh, in uh, the service fees. I didn't particularly do a breakdown of that one. I was more interested in the pickup trucks based upon what I had seen or heard from uh, watching the previous presentation. Um, you then mentioned Unit 53, and I do have something on that. I think I used a case of paper today, but um, Unit 53 is one of the department's articulated sidewalk plows. Last year it needed repairs during February 18 in the snow clearing season. The parts were expensive and it took months to arrive. Last year the department spent $9,284 for parts that took from February to June to get there. So th my point is, if I can't get the parts for it anymore, it's it's no better than a boat anchor. Mm -hmm. um, our mechanic uh, did do a spreadsheet. Um, our total cost repairing that particular vehicle is thirteen thousand and thirty-four dollars. My concern with those particular vehicles is they cost the town about one hundred and twenty thousand to replace, and they're only used for a very limited time uh, of the year for one particular task, and that is sidewalks. I also feel that we, they can no longer be relied upon because the local dealer no longer maintains 
a sufficient inventory of parts to get them back on the road when needed. My opinion is based upon the February to June supply uh, time we experienced last year. I also feel that for $120,000, the equipment is overpriced when you compare it to the cost of a new max six-wheel dump truck at only $122,000. Um, I can do a lot more with a Mack dump truck than I can with that articulated plow. So, repeatedly, uh, one of the selectmen, a former member of your budget committee, uh, using the term rolling stock, has always, you know, challenged me to look at the viability and the number of pieces of equipment that we have. And those particularly articulated plows, I think their time has come. <coughs> Anything else, Ms. LeBranch? Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Chris, you saw our and Jennifer, welcome. You saw the uh, video snippet and saw the video from our last meeting. Yes, right? we did. Do yep. you want to make any comments on anything we have to say relative to this warrant? Just no. Okay. No. Just, I just want to tonight for brevity answer the questions that you have. Great. All right. Okay. Uh, one meeting, please. Uh, are we having any other questions or statements? Mr. Ladd. It seems to me the tension is not that you need the equipment. It's the mechanism of funding to pay for right. the equipment. Uh, this and that I have no, uh, right. it's not my choice. No, I understand that. We have no choice but to replace the equipment. We have a savings account which is in place to be used when appropriate to maintain what the town must maintain. So we can either keep that 243 in the unres unreserved fund balance, which is really surplus in the town, and have inappropriate broken equipment, which is expensive repair, or we can buy the equipment we need and be grateful that we're taking it out of a savings account and not adding to the tax rate. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Walker. First of all, Mr. Ladd, it's not a savings account. This is unheard of in the history of Hampton. We, we hear people at the meetings say we're going to increase the UFB and then we turn around and double-edged sword we're just picking and choosing all these projects to draw money out of it. That's not giving the taxpayers a choice and I feel bad for the director and deputy because th that's just like saying well let's just fund it whatever we want. This is money that he for 50 years in this town and you and others have already paid and the bottom line is if people are for this warrant article, then put it out there and add it to what it's supposed to be the way it should be. And it's getting out of hand. And, you know, most recently, if, if anybody read the article by Norman Silverdick on December 14th, he was absolutely right on. And I'm telling you, we're getting to the point in this town, you know, this $7 million could then all of a sudden be $4 million. So where does it stop? Do we say at 60000 And we're going to have the same problem with the MIS. Hold on a second. Well, th that ridiculous 70000 that we're going to do is un undesignated fund balance for that. It's just out of control. I feel bad for Jen and Chris because I'm for this, but I am not for it the way it's funding. And we've got to start somewhere because this is just crazy. I like could okay. disagree uh, with you. Blood, you don't have the floor. Regina. Yes. I'm quite aware of the way things have done with the unassigned fund balance in the past years. I'm also aware that it was down to zero for a very long time. You can call it whatever you want, unassigned fund balance, surplus, savings. But what it is is it's collateral, cash collateral, that the town has access to if they need to. For years, we've offset the tax rate at the end of the year. Finance director comes in, explains what we have in the assigned unassigned fund balance. It's been reviewed by the auditors. And the norm, I guess, or the thing that seemed to happen all the time was we took a certain amount from there and we used it to offset the tax rate. This is doing the same thing the way I look at it, okay? It's doing, it's going to get public works equipment that they're in dire need of. I understand how it says no tax impact. Legally, I'm not sure if we could change that to say no current tax impact. There's always a tax impact. The taxpayer always pays, no matter what. How it's worded doesn't matter. It always comes from the taxpayer. We're the town of Hampton. Therefore, everything's going to come from the town of Hampton taxpayer. We can either add the tax on as an additional tax, or we can use money that we have been able to set aside and save up for one, either in generally offsetting the tax rate, which the way I look at it is I'd rather use that million dollars instead of giving it back to the town of Hampton taxpayer 
use it to accomplish things to get Sorry. projects done. Mm -hmm. This was my idea. The town manager presented the warrant article coming from, you know, raising new money for taxes and appropriation for new taxes. Public Works is spending at least tens of thousands of dollars on maintenance a year for these vehicles that, much like our town software, doesn't have support for anymore. So using that excess money, yeah, we don't, we don't want to use much of it, which is why we didn't just blindly take an amount and offset the tax rate. Instead of doing that, we're doing this. We have a couple other small projects finishing off the doors of the town hall, and I can't think of the other things offhand. All the turnout gear for the fire department, very important. Same thing with public works. This is very important. It may not be a life-threatening situation, but if a public works department doesn't have the vehicles to get the roads cleared, then guess what? Nothing in the town's gonna get done. And if public works can't function for one hour, the town of Hampton shuts down. So that's why I made the motion, and I believe that's why my board agreed to unanimously approve it to go this way. Okay, anyone else who has not spoken on this wish to speak on this? Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you. You mentioned one of the sidewalk plows is down. Is the other one functioning now? Currently all three are up and functional. Oh yeah, all three. Currently. Today. Uh, this proposal says to purchase two. Right. <coughs> this, let me say that this was brought up probably 20 years ago to go to a skid steer type unit. Yep. And there was a million reasons why it would work. I don't know why. I'm not going to say who it was or anything else. It's just mm -hmm. it was going down the wrong road. Now we're in a position where these things are reliable and parts availability makes them not valuable to have. I would suggest if you're going to go to something different <coughs> that you ask for one the first time around and that you be very careful in what you select mm -hmm. so that we don't end up with another over a hundred thousand dollar oops that down the road four or five years six years later junk right. we don't want to go there i would agree so I, I, by lumping this stuff all together in this warrant article it's how, it, you can't pick and choose right. it goes by the wording my position is that you you need the two pickup trucks you, and you need the one ton now you've you've put us in a position or, or management has put us in a position where we either are in favor of this or we're not in favor of it. <coughs> and then the issue of the undesignated fund balance comes into it, how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see this. Can I make a comment on that? But to that point, and it's a lot of the times where, and I think Jason mentioned it in one of his things about what is the timeline? Um, when you look at when this expires, it is 2020. Um, so there is a full year. Unlike the uh, trash vehicles or the six wheelers, the lead time on these vehicles are not as extensive. So when you're looking at a new vehicle purchase, just because it says two, it doesn't mean we have to buy two on day one. We can get pricing because we might get a better deal for two. We may reserve some rights, but it affords us the option to look into perhaps that we have scenarios around town, which we obviously do. We need two different types of machine. One is going to work better up around the school area and one's going to work better downtown. But it replaces two machines that are currently well not valuable what, and causing us quite significant I agree with issues. what you said, and that's part of why I said what I did, but this doesn't separate that out. This says, there it is, take it or leave it. Once if I, we, if I had my druthers, because of these, these two are sidewalk tractors, and when they predominantly go out, they start at the schools and work yeah, their way out, yeah, yeah. and knowing how school budget is looked at very favorably, I'd really love to 
tack them onto the school's budget, to be honest with you. But, well, it, 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 but I understand <laughs> that it's my, but my, my point in making that. That changing too, by the way. Go my ahead. point in making that uh, point is that the two, the trucks are for the roads. These right. are for the sidewalks. Right. And while we're out plowing, I mean, we're always conscious of, okay, we've got five hours till school opens or I whatever know. it is. I know. And we literally pull people off the street to put them in this to make sure that the sidewalks are safe. Uh, at least, you know, from the core of this, we have a core root of. Yeah, from the center out. Right. Yeah. So Absolutely. I mean, and time no, doesn't that's always. probably a valid point that maybe in the future when we look at these, we try and break them into more manageable chunks, if you will. So you started out saying if you had your druthers, and your druthers being the sidewalk maintenance vehicles being a separate warrant article, is that what you're saying? Ma that when we look in the future for warrant articles, that we start to, with what Mr. Pluff said, look at categorizing them better. Right. But right now, these are all necessary in this current year. Exactly. I.e. the three this trucks that are rusted or dead or really costing the, the taxpayers a lot of money. I don't know of any taxpayer that would look at these maintenance bills for these trucks and it literally, if they were in their own yard, and continue. They'd have been long gone. And the same thing is if you had a vehicle in your yard and you couldn't, it might be the best Ferrari in the world, but if you can't get a, it was a drive shaft for one of these. If you can't get the drive shaft, she don't go. And that's what we're dealing with. Are you all set, Mr. Puff? Uh, I said what I wanted to say. No, and you're uh, spot on. You're all set. Just third Frank. Yeah, oh. just for clarification purposes, yep. okay, because my worthy <laughs> constituent to the right of me had valid points. Glad you said worthy. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The constituent <laughs> is right. This vehicle that you're using to clear the sidewalks does not belong to the school department, correct? Correct. correct. It does and not. it will use to clear other sidewalks in town, correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Mr. Warburton. Is there still time to separate these out into another water or not? Well, that they need so. to be. I mean, where they, they're needed now, I, I just, I don't see. No, no, to Mike's point, what I was saying, we're trying to help it. Brian, yeah. Brian, the answer to your question is yes. The selectmen have the opportunity. Oh, that's what I, I to wanted was an answer, yeah. Yeah. But it's, this is not a, an issue to the DPW directly. Well, no, but the time is constrained. So the selectmen have the time to do. We do all the warrant articles if they wish. The reason I ask that, if they're willing to do that on Monday, maybe we hold off on this one. Because here's the, here's the other thing. How do you guys feel about that suggestion? Well, uh, I think it's probably the best bet. Yeah. We're all in agreement with that? Yeah, but can I just make one more Don't argue when we're agreeing with you. No, no, I know that. But I want to make another comment <laughs> okay. to Regina's great point. <laughs> Earlier on on the, the turnout gear, you're absolutely right. And we voted unanimously to use the unassigned fund balance for that. Because my, my hope is when it comes to life saving, that's an absolute reason. But in fairness, and even though I don't like this, in fairness to Jen and Chris, to Mike's great point, I'd be willing to support this if we separated it out. Because I think Mike, Mr. Pluff, in his years' experience, brings up valid points. And it's just like either have an all or none. So if, the, if you're willing to bring this Monday night, we're meeting Wednesday, or the, the school anyway, and Thursday for final review. We still have time. I'd be willing to look at that more if that's, the, if that's the case. Yeah, I think that um, there seems to be an agreement on that. I'd have to respectfully disagree. There's a I'll question. tell you why. Uh, Chris, um, what, what we're doing is sending a message to the selectmen to maybe reconsider sucking out. They can Just decide consider. to do so or not do so, and we'll deal with whatever their decision is. Okay. Uh, there's also the issue that's been raised on by a number of members about the use of the unassigned fund balance. Uh, whether it's appropriate in this case. I mean, there is no hard criteria on that. No. My own criteria that I use mm -hmm. is it's mm -hmm. absolutely, we got to have mm -hmm. it. Some really bad stuff's going to happen if we don't. That's why I said. I don't see that in this. I do in the firefighters. I do. Protective gear, for Yeah, example, I agree with absolutely. you. I'm saying, yeah. But, you know, I don't see it in this. So I, I'm not real thrilled with it being in uh, the, unassigned out of the, fund balance, uh, the unassigned fund balance. Um, or whatever you may want to call it, Regina. Yeah, you could call it the excessive taxation fund, too. Can we at least bring it back Monday to see? Now, now I, 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 I polled you guys just now. Yeah. We can hold off on the vote on this to see if the selectmen reconsider this warrant article. That would be good. Yeah. Are, are we still wanting, okay with doing that? 
I would like to do that. I would that like will. to do that. Okay. I have a question if I might. Just the, yes, Mr. The, the DPW director was about to make a comment about what we discussed, and I'd like to hear his comment. We put together, starting a number of years ago, uh, I did the first couple <coughs> with Mr. Noyes, a CIP, and every year when we looked at it when with respect to vehicles, because we had an aged fleet, it literally kept going up, 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 and up. I think the first year it started in the 300,000 range. If you look at the CIP, um, it's actually predicted uh, go to up to 480. We kind of set a goal that we were trying to keep the thing below about $300,000. So every year we postpone or push off some of these replacements. You're just kicking it to other people. We brought forth this year vehicle purchases 243. We found a way to lease trucks so that we don't have this lump sum on the CIP. In other words, hit people with spikes at 42. If you add them up, it's 285 under the 300,000. It's the same thing I did. We did last year. So by addressing these vehicles now, you are helping to keep within that CIP plan that we prepare, that the planning board adopts, and that I believe, well, a number of times have been charged with. It's in the CIP. You need to, Chris. You need to follow your CIP. We are following our CIP. That's it. Thank you. You know, uh, I've been on this committee six years, and I very rarely do I get even a peek at the CIP. Until you sent your email out the other day, I was like, eye-opening to me. It's like, wow, finally. That's news to me, because yeah, it's, I, a, it's a reality. I mean, okay, yeah, and 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 I'm so I'm delighted to have all that information. Uh, Thank you for that. It was really great to see all that information come at us. And I'll have some other questions on other Warren articles related to that. Uh, and I don't doubt the need um, for the one dump truck plowing. wing. I'm a little questionable on the sidewalk, but generally I'm not really questioning that much. I'm uncomfortable with the unassigned fund balance, frankly. And I'm also I'm sensitive to uh, what Mr. Pluff was saying about the sidewalk vehicles probably should be separate so they can be uh, separately decided by the voters. So I'm, I'm kind of sympathetic to that, but it's not a showstopper for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but the unassigned fund balance, you know, it violates my own individual assessment that yep. the unassigned fund balance should only be used for things we absolutely got to do. Yep. And this is not quite an absolute we got to do. I mean, we really do kind of need to do it, but it's not like an absolute got to do, drop dead if you don't do it kind of thing. Um, if these vehicles if there's much more uh, substantial cost in these particular vehicles, I will not be replacing them, and, and I will deadline them. Mm -hmm. And um, that affects service. Exactly. All that affects. And, and as the voters right. choose, sure. when the when the one article stands on its own with a tax impact, and the voters say no, mm -hmm. then they they have uh, they should have the benefit of experiencing that new service level that brings. Okay. Yep. It shouldn't be telling the voters, well, for your own good, we're going to tell you it's like no tax impacts, so go ahead and vote for this kind of thing. Understood. That's not what I tell anyone. I know. Just I know. It, you, no, okay. you're, you're not telling that. But as Mr. Mora pointed out the other day, not having experience prior to coming on the budget committee, when he saw no tax impact, his basic interpretation was a common one, I think, which was, well, it's free money. <coughs> yeah, that's what you know, I thought. And I think that's that's. Uh, that's right a, the there is no free it's money. It's not necessarily an intention of deception, but it is deceiving to many voters, I believe. And I believe Mr. Moore yeah. was using himself as an example of that. And I, I think that uh, if I went back in time, I probably was deceived or under that deception many, many years ago. But we all get educated as we grow, of course. Right, Dave? Mr. LeBranch. So that I can understand this correctly, the, we're asking the selectmen to do something. First of all, they may say, we're not doing anything. Right. Fine. Okay. Right. So then we're just back looking at the same thing. Or they're going to take the, the three trucks and 
put that in one Warren article, and the same funding, the unassigned fund balance, and then we're going to have another Warren article that's going to have two sidewalk maintenance vehicles with the same uh, funding coming from the unassigned fund balance. So no, we're just going to no, have that's, that's two question. different. That's question the unassigned fund balance as well. We're just going to have two different, but essentially the same thing that we're looking at here. Is that sound about right? Yeah. Is that what we're asking? Yeah. Are you driving to a point? That point we of clarification. Vote now? They're asking Mr. the board of selectmen to. Uh, are you driving the point well, that we should I, vote now? I was ready to vote on this. I'm tonight. ready to vote too. Okay. Vote. So you're objecting to delaying on the vote? Oh yeah. Okay, Absolutely. then we will vote. No, no, it's a, it's no, a majority thing. To delaying it too. We we can we can vote on you the matter it. and still request the selectmen to reconsider. I I would be comfortable with that. Can I, Mr. Wobber? Point of uh, preference. Um, we have heard many years how we respect the opinions of people who have been on boards a long time. And I don't say this lightly. The vice chairman has been on numerous boards in this town for over 38 years. He has asked that we wait until Monday so that our selectmen's rep, much like I asked our school board rep to do, our selectmen's rep from the budget committee would go back to the board to see if they would make any changes. Because the bigger issue is combined with what our chairman said. There's little faith in the voters if we're continuing to go down the unassigned fund balance. And that's the real issue. There's no faith, so let's just do it and say there's no tax impact. So that's a whole other issue. But I feel, I know where Mike's going to because it used to be the philosophy, and Stephen, you remember on the floor of the old 1996 when we got up and you and I and spoke in favor of Highland Avenue taken right out of the budget. One time only cost to fix that road, and we did it. The voters have a right to see. And I think what Mike is saying with all these Warren articles, let's digest it. Let's have the voters look at things. Whether Chris and, and Jen, I know what they're talking about, they're looking at the total package, and I understand. But we have, a, as a budget committee, really are looking at trying to help everyone. But our question, we would like to have Regina bring it back. And it may not change, Stephen. You're absolutely right. But I would feel better at least them knowing the, the uh, concept that we're arriving at, that and the unassigned fund balance. And who knows? They may talk about that, too. But I, I would feel more comfortable. And if it doesn't change, then we vote Thursday night anyway at the final review a week from tonight. Uh, and we address the chairman's point as my point as well. It's not an absolute emergency for the unassigned fund balance. But I'm not. And if I'm outvoted and they vote tonight, fine. But I'm not ready to vote tonight. Well, what I'm suggesting is that we can vote tonight and we can vote again next Wednesday night. <coughs> based on the selectmen having changed or not changed. Uh, there apparently is some members that wish to vote tonight. I see no reason not to vote tonight, if especially since these members agreed to also send the request to the Board of Selectmen to reconsider the use of the unsigned fund balance and to reconsider splitting this into two warrant articles, as described. Is that, is that a fair reflection of the body's desire? Mr. LeBranch. Just one more point, Tim, uh, Mr. Chair. You said, essentially, in your opinion, it didn't feel as if these were absolutely necessary. But of course, you're not the DPW director and you're not down there driving these vehicles. These are, and I, so you're, you have that opinion. I have, I'm of the opinion that this is an absolute must have. These, this equipment has to be. The funding mechanism. I, I, I know, the funding is one thing, Brian, but it seems to me that they're the ones, and, and, I watched the presentation. Well, you talk about a rusted I get your point. I get okay. your point. They're the experts, and I'm not. They should have my and vote. Am I. I shouldn't have my well, vote. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but the that. question on the table, Stephen, is whether or not we're going to vote now and simultaneously request the selectmen to look at the two factors that Sounds I just good. outlined. Is that good what the me. body wishes to do? I'm fine with that. Okay. So, Mr. LeBranch is making a motion to recommend this Warren article we already, uh, and request the selectmen to reconsider splitting this into two warrants, two articles rather, and reconsider the use of the unassigned fund balance. So, we're do I have a second? You had Frank originally. Are you gonna, are you gonna be my second again? I'll be a second. Okay. There you go. Oh, there we go. So we're ready to vote. All those in favor of Mr. LeBranch's wonderful motion. We have Mr. LeBranch, 
Ms. Barnes, Ms. Ladd, and Mr. Frank, that be four. And those opposed? Uh, that would be the other four. Got that, Barbara? Um, Mr. Branch, Ms. Barnes, Mr. Ladd, and the other in favor? Duluth Frank. Frank. So it's a 4-4 vote at the moment, but subject to change because we're going to re-vote on it again. There so not, not a big deal. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the wonderful culverts at uh, right around Park Avenue, I guess. Huh? Uh, Chris and Jennifer, you saw the video of this. Do you have uh, anything you want to say about it? I prefer to just answer any Great, questions Mr. that LeBranch. aren't resolved. Having watched the selectmen's meeting, and this, when it was first discussed, there was, it was discussed that it could very well have been two Warren articles, mm -hmm. one being the Eaton Park, and then the other one being the Park Ave culvert. And when I heard that, I liked that because, because the Eaton Park culvert, I would just as well see that the money that uh, the 20 percent from the parking lot because they're always looking for something to do with that money okay they're always looking for something to do what are we going to do this year with that money like the surplus yeah <coughs> no but but I I would feel very you know you talk about rewriting a uh, rewriting a uh, you know uh, one of these Warren articles this is one that I would be very happy to see. Are so you suggesting this? Like we consider this into two more. Oh, at that I point, may I shed some light yeah. on why that doesn't make as much money <coughs> because of the engineering behind it? Please. Yeah. Okay. This is nothing to do with the recreation fields. This has nothing to do with recreation. This is truly a drainage issue. The drainage pipe that is on um, the uh, the. the driveway side of, of where you enter yeah. uh, into the park. That is an undersized drain. That drain itself goes all the way back through the fields, up to High Street, up Toll Ave, down Winnicunit, up Academy Ave and collects a section of High Street and I might have had one of those roads backwards. That is not indicative of it being a recreation project. It is a drainage issue that we have that surcharges. Tying that together with the culvert that is, I'm using geographic locations, next to King's Kingdom, but again, nothing to do with the playground, is a stream bed that comes down and around, goes through an existing arched culvert. And if you recall, to get into that park, there's sort of a one-lane roadway yep. that, that's a crossing. That's an environmental permitting. That's a wetland permit. Um, that culvert, once the water hits there, again, it collects a large portion down uh, Park Avenue and then goes back out onto Winnicott and collects drainage from down there. Putting the two together is an economic decision. It's an efficiency decision. It allows us then to park, pave Park Avenue as one project, as a finished project, similar to what we're trying to accomplish with the sewer and the drain projects up on Ann Lane. Get the utilities done, and then come back in and get a final paved surface. So that was really the push to make this one project because of everything that can get done at once. So I really do want to not. Thank you. I'm not finished, if I could please. Mr. Just, Branch. Some, just a little more. That makes a lot of sense. and. I did watch the part that you talked about, you know, the water's going to go downhill. Once it gets to that area, um, you're very close to the marsh. Is that where it eventually just drains into? Eventually this goes out to the marsh end all the way out to, to the other side of 101. Okay. Thank you very much. You know, I had some, I had some what ifs in my meeting, or in our meeting on the 26th, mm -hmm. uh, most of which have been dispelled by just further consideration and some of it by information you guys have supplied. And this is a stand on your own article, uh, and I am, I am uh, in favor of it. Mr. Warburg. I'm very much in favor of it, but he, and I just want to make a statement. The article above is $2,000 less than we told we absolutely need it. We're going to use the unassigned fund balance. This is the right way of doing it. Yeah. The tax impact of voters, excellently expressed. Jen, you explained it very well. I watched it. I'm absolutely in favor of this, but just remember what I just said about it. So. Okay, we're all set, right? Yep. yep.
Mr. Frank wants to make a motion to recommend this, and uh, Mr. Walburton wants to second it, and everyone's going to raise their hand in favor of it. Yes. Excellent. So it's unanimous. Yeah. Wasn't that great, Fred? Wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. What's next? Is the DRA one next? Police purchase plow truck. This is a problem child. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's a problem primarily because of uh, the open question that we have with uh, town council, which we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. And we decided that we would put this off, and I assume we're going to decide to put this off again. Yes. So let us move on to the next one, which is replace the water line facility. We already voted on that. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Unanimous, eight nothing, the, uh, with the question answered by Chris Jacobs about an eight inch pipe. I got it written down. We voted eight nothing, nothing. Tonight? No, the 26th. Tonight. Really? Yep. I wrote that vote down under the I guess, trash. I guess that's one I failed to record. No, I, have, I have you ate nothing. I believe you. Okay. I failed to record it. It's my error. Did you remember? I own the error, okay? <laughs> Relax, guys. I doubt it will be your only error. But we can vote again if people feel comfortable about it. All right, the LED street lights. I thought we voted on this one, too. Did we or not, Brian? Um, I had it, you know, I wrote it, ain't nothing, it was crossed out for some reason. Okay, so Barbara just said we didn't on this one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Stacey. By the way, Barbara, did we vote on the last one? Uh, what was that number? 29. 29. We did not vote. I didn't think so. I, I didn't record it. I just recorded it. No, we went back <laughs> and changed it. Okay, then we need to vote on that. Change anything. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve 29 based on... We're talking on about replace the water line DPW yes. facility... Motion to recommend by Mr. Warburton, Second. seconded by Mr. Pluff. Is there any discussion or questions on this? Great. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank Officially you very much. Now. Yeah. And uh, I'll have to retract my error. Thank you. And I know I my know error was that I said I was an error when I wasn't an error. So that made me an error. <laughs> it's kind of like circular logic, isn't it? <laughs> Did I read what Fonzie said? I thought I made a mistake, but I was. But I was mistaken. I thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. I, I second that. I, I agree with you what you just said. LED, <laughs> LED <laughs> number thirty. <laughs> LED <laughs> street lights. Uh, motion by oh. Mr. Ladd, second by Mr. LeBranch to recommend Article Thirty, tentatively number thirty. LED street lights. Is there any questions or comments, Mr. LeBranch? <coughs> the question I had. Uh, from last week was we I, I watched the presentation when the salesman come in and they're going to take the bulb out basically and replace it with an LED mm -hmm. okay now to, at that point we own them yes but, and we pay for the electric from that point on yes just like we do we're now. doing now right. yeah okay but we're not going to own that arm, that's right. the blows the unitil. We have to pay them rent for that thing. And 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 as well the arm. But down the beach, you're gonna do Ocean Boulevard as well? No, bit. because it belongs to the state. <coughs> okay, that answers that question. <laughs> Thank you. Where Anybody else? Mr. Morrow. I had a question on this. Oh, you want to tell us a tell <laughs> question? <laughs> I told you last week. Did you remember it? No. Obviously not. Well you know it. It was it useful, was, though. It, was, it, it was, wasn't even that. It was probably the question is, when you were going to be coming here, my question was, how much are we currently <coughs> spending per year on the existing lights, and we're going to replace them, and how much might the cost be per year once we get the new lights, so therefore we can understand how long it would take us to pay off this price. I'm assuming that we got, save enough energy to, to save it. To save money in the future, we currently pay two hundred thirteen thousand in a rough number that I'm remembering from the budget. Because right. five years ago it was two hundred, it's now up to two thirteen for the streetlights, and and they're <coughs> and you pay whether they're on or they're not. Okay, you probably didn't, weren't aware of that. No, I did not. <laughs> streetlights are not metered, so what happens at the central offices they go okay it was dark for 8.12 hours last night times 872 structures or fixtures that use and each one is broken down by how much it uses and that's how they calculate your bill 
Mm -hmm. So if the street light's out, you're technically still paying for it. Mm -hmm. Because within their rate structure, that's how they <coughs> capture or recapture Excuse the cost me. of those fixtures that are currently there. Mm -hmm. So what Affinity did is sit down with Unitil and say, okay, of the 872 lights, and they did it fixture by fixture, what's the buyout, if you will, of all those fixtures? The short of it is we will save, let's say, $5,000 a month in electricity, and that's about what it is, but it's going to cost us $4,000 a month to buy out half of the value. Okay? The value of the streetlights is $240,000. But right off the bat, Unitil says, I will give you a credit, give you back, erase, $122,000. So one half of the cost or the value of those structures, those heads, is they're going to weigh. They, but they want the other 122. And how they want it is, or how it's calculated is, we will save 5000 a month in electricity. But we will pay to Unitil 4000 of the five. So the actual savings for the first year is like $1,000. It gets better the second year. It gets better the third year, and by the fifth year, we're, Unitil has paid back its pure, its five, six, and seven thousand dollars of savings then. And over the course of the ten years, the total savings package is close to one million dollars. <coughs> That's uh, good planning. I love that. Yeah, I it, like it, well, I, it. And, I, and I give the credit to Affinity and Unitil for working. Unitil for working with Affinity. And affinity having the ability to negotiate that with, um, with, uh, with Unitil, so um, they see it. We see a savings. I'm sure it helps Unitil on certain aspects, um, and, and it helps certainly helps out the town with a number of things. Thank It'll you. be a better quality okay, lighting. Else? We save money, Mr. Ladd. I just make a comment. Not only is there an economic savings, there is an environmental benefit. Yes, right. there's a CO2 emissions reduction. Yep. That's huge, right? And I think that's part of the incentive of the unit. Very good thing. Hmm. And LED lights hold up better than flooding, yeah. too, right? They will. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> in flooding? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant flood lighting. <laughs> no, no, I'm moving article 30. Keep water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving article 30. Second. Okay, everyone wants to vote in favor of this, right? Right. So it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, that exciting. Mm -hmm. Next. Yeah, let me cast the votes or record your votes. Okay. <coughs> now we're going to deal with the Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund, a fun topic for one and all. Chris, uh, Jennifer, you want to make any comments? We have a lot to say on this. Uh, we talked for 25 minutes at our last meeting on this. I think yeah. the one thing that I, I wanted to point out that um, it didn't get highlighted when I rewatched the, the meeting was you see from the CIP we have a number of streets mm. planned for improvement. Um, Mr. Pluff asked a question uh, that I should digress. On Laf Lafayette Road, have we spent any of the 1.5 on sidewalks? No, not yet. No. Because the, we're actually meeting with the engineering firm, I think the following week, yeah. to um, ascertain what they've come up with a plan and to actually see it for the first time as far as new landscaping, et cetera. So none yeah. of that money is planned for that. The reason for the capital reserve fund for sidewalks is 26000 a year in our budget for the year we had 46 or even 85 um, was difficult to, to find even a qualified contractor that would want to bid on just 20, 25 or 50 or $80,000 worth of work. Jennifer came up with this idea. What if? While we're doing a road plan, there is sufficient money in there to also do the adjacent sidewalks, either replace or connect where we're missing. A Repair of the ADA accessibility plates as we're moving through. We can then, much more cost effectively for the town, say to that bigger contractor, you also need to do the sidewalks or put the sidewalks in it. So we'll get a better bang for our buck, we'll get more sidewalks done. 
um, and it won't be coming out of paving money and it won't be coming out of sewer money and it won't be coming out of a host of other things we'll actually get more done uh, and with a reasonable plan um, another question that came up and I had to search for it. we do have an inventory of sidewalks we do have them rated for last or worst there are some I noticed some voids in there I will be asking my engineer to up, update it but we have them all rated um, not abs, one of the worst ones, A Street, uh, A Street to B's, that's a new one. So there's, there are things in here that we know of that we do need to address. Um, so we do have a plan, but that was the reason for doing it. That particular plan, another Excel spreadsheet, I assume. It is. Uh, that wasn't sent to us yet, right? No, okay. because I don't it's like the state that it's in. Yeah. Okay, that's it's fine. got too many holes in it. That's fine. Um, we, we've discussed sidewalks over the years, and, and I love this concept, as I've expressed. It was, it was actually your idea. That, you well, know. that's probably why I love it, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't vote against it. <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, not Trump change my mind. That's right. I voted for it. Well, I still have, as you know, I still have problems, and I'll restate them now. I have a problem um, with the... Uh, agents to expand being the Board of Selectmen. I don't see any reason why you need to have an intra-year decision to expand why it could not be uh, uh, taken at town meeting. Well, I, I see it with the fire, firefighters gear, saying, for example. Right. But like I just explained, this work is going to be attached to a sewer paving and or drainage right. project. A master contract is going to have to come before the Board of Selectmen for let's say Brock's paving, they did a certain year. Drain. They were the they did right uh, drain selected bidder. And and when we do that, then we list out to them. It's a four hundred twenty-five thousand dollar project. Two hundred from paving, uh, one twenty-five from sewer or drainage, depending on what, and X from uh, sidewalks. And so I think it it. I, in my world, it, I thought it made sense that because they're the agents to expend of the highway block grant, uh, you know, the paving money, um, they have to approve all major contracts above fifty thousand dollars. They are literally mm -hmm. the agents to expend oh, through right. that, that is through why, the town's purchasing policy. That is why you would suggest that would just be consistent with existing practices. Uh, I have a, a problem in that space generally, and. Uh, it, again, it's a question of financing mechanism. Mm -hmm. I think having the money in a sidewalk fund makes sense. There are those who are concerned, and I've heard of quite a lot of noise, uh, email and phone-wise, about you know creating another slush fund, as it were. And I'm like, I didn't really see that. Mm -hmm. But when I got your spreadsheet on your planned sidewalks, I got alarmed because I saw, I think in year 2021, 20, three years out or something like right. that. It might be five years out, I don't really remember for sure, but you've got uh, a six-foot sidewalk, uh, which was voted down last year on a Warren article. So given that the voters said no, mm -hmm. why is it on the plan at all? That's, that's a problem. And suggestive of the slush fund in the sense of we're going to deal with our political friend, so to speak, and, and we'll have the money to do it, as opposed to not having the money and have to have to stand in front of the voters. So I'm concerned about that because I saw, what was the name of that road again? I'm sure it's the Mace Road. Mace Road. Mace, Road. Yeah. Yep. Mace yep. Road just jumped out at me like a, like a sore nose and yep. a sore thumb combined when I saw that on that list. So I've become even more concerned than, than I had expressed at the prior meeting. Uh, so if you want, you don't have to respond to any of that if you don't want to. Well, I understand your concern. Um, but does anyone else have any questions or comments? No? Do you wish to vote on it now? Mm -hmm. Okay. I see a motion by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Frank, to recommend the Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund as written. All those in favor, raise your hand. Mr. Frank, Mr. Ladd, all those opposed? Everybody else? So, uh, two, six. I still think the concept, the idea of it is great. 
there are some flaws in there. The selectmen could address those flaws. I think the board would, the committee would likely reconsider that vote. I think we have one more. Two more. Well, two, because we got a new one here. Uh, oh, yeah. Information technology upgrades. Uh, well, I think we're all set with DPW. Thank you Thank so much you. for your help. And so we really did next appreciate Thursday that workbook. Based on next Thursday, the 10th, yep. Yeah. For the budget. Yeah, for, yeah. Based, for the other two articles yeah. based on yeah. what yeah. happens at select. We have to be totally done on Thursday, so on everything. So. We'll see you yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Look we'll forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for that workbook. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Anyway. Very helpful. Go to the doctor. Oh, there you Just go. one other thing. Okay. Uh, information technology upgrades. Tentative number is number 27. Is there any questions or comments on this one? I, I have to stick to my guns on this one. It's 72,000. Here we go. Out of the undesignated fund balance. So I, I just can't vote for it. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, I'm of uh, like mind on this one with Brian. Um, motion, motion by Mr. LeBrant, seconded by Mr. Frank to recommend this warrant article. All those in favor, raise your hand. Mr. Ladd, Mr. Warburton, Mr. Frank. No, no, I'm not in favor of Ms. Barnes. I'm, I'm not in favor did of Did I say Warburton? Yes. You did. Oh, sorry. Let me say it again. You Mr. Did. Frank, Mr. Ladd, Ms. Barnes, Mr. LeBranch. That's four. All, right. All those opposed? That's the other four. <laughs> four by four. Four, four. four. I'm sorry, I have Mr. Frank, Mr. Ladd, Mr. Barnes, and... And Bill Branch. No, no, four. Yeah, four. she said Mr. Walker. No, I'm, I'm opposed. Ms. Barnes. Ms. No, Barnes was the other one. Frank, Ladd, Barnes, and Four. And then yeah. the other four. Yeah, yeah. And we have one more you said that came in? Yes, we have the uh, grave markers or something like that. Yeah, no. Well, see, that's the that's the email to us. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from, the petition. Uh, Christina. No, last week. <laughs> okay, yeah. so here we are on the last one for this evening, unless we're going to reconsider the one that Bob wanted to reconsider. Can I make the one request? Of the this one's real simple. No, mine, this would be a yes. Article 20, I'd like to change my vote to an abstain that you did, because I'm torn too like you are. Article Yeah, we'll deal with that when we finish this up, okay? Just that was the firefighter grant. Yeah. For, uh, article, tentative article number 48, Veteran Service Grave Markets. This is a citizen petition warrant article. It reads to reimburse the Hampton American Legion Plus 35 for the purchase of 200 bronze service flag holder grave markers. Apparently, they already bought them and they're seeking reimbursement from the town taxpayers. Mr. LeBranch, your finger are up. Um, can I make a motion? Yes. And then somebody could second it. First, Mr. So Frank recommended. Now, is there any discussion? Yeah. Mr. LeBranch. You know, no disrespect, of course, to our veterans and everybody else. However, you know, it's, it's so easy to keep going to the taxpayers and say, gimme, gimme, gimme. I have to say on this, I would, I would very much be in favor of it if they were using the money from the cemetery trust fund, okay? I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. So okay. I cannot recommend this. Anybody else wish to make a comment? I concur with Mr. LeBranch. Anybody else wish to concur with Mr. Branch? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, we're all ready to vote. All those in favor of Mr. LeBranch's motion to recommend this, <laughs> please raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, all those opposed, there we go. It is an eight nothing negative. Now, I actually will abstain from this oh, excuse since me, seven I haven't no. talked about it at the Board of Selectmen level yet, so. Post 35, Fred. Yeah. Thanks. Stephen brought up an ex excellent point I have to say. So we have zero seven one on the vote. Yeah, now who was the second? Mr. Frank. <laughs> Just put him down for all seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so you want okay. to go back now to 20? Yeah, 20, well, okay. Mr. Firefighter. So is there, is there, without objection, Mr. Warburton wishes to change his vote from I do as well. to abstain. I do as well. Okay. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I want to abstain as well. Abstain. I'm torn on that one. I'm very torn on it as well. So I am in the same. And you and I reckon goes with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm torn on it. I agree with What are we doing? doing? What are we doing? Article 20. Yes, the original vote was seven zero and one seven one one. 
I had voted no. No, it was 611. 611. The chairman abstained, but after your comments, me thinking about it, Stephen, Mr. LeBranch and I would like, he wants to change his yes vote to an abstain. I want to change my no vote to an abstain. Is there any objection to reconsidering this, this uh, vote? No objection. So I'm hearing a second by Mr. LeBranch to take a fresh vote on the Firefighter Safety Grant, Article Number 20. Seconded by Mr. Walburton. Yes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of this article to recommend, raise your hand. We have Ms. Barnes, Mr. Moore, Ms. <laughs> Mr. Ladd, Mr. Pluff, Mr. Frank. Five. And the balance are abstaining, is that what I heard? Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Walburton are abstaining. So it's five, zero, now 503. Okay. And you can see that we are keeping <coughs> both votes on record. Thank you. Only the last one counts. I, I, need, I need to ask. Cool. What do you want to know? Yeah. The vote. Okay, this is the vote. The, the, the tally is 503. Three that abstained are Jones, Warburton, and LeBranch. Okay. Um, Mr. Ladd. You wanted to reconsider a warrant out of, please tell me about it again. It was number 45. Oh, that's right. It was to transfer the infamous unassigned fund balance. Did they use that word or that? Okay. Infamous. Got it. Fund 21 balance to the general fund. <coughs> we voted on this last week, uh, 7 1 0. Right. Um, 45 seconds worth of discussion and voting on that one, by the way, when we did this. So I think it may be worthy of giving it a few more minutes here. Um, so we're okay with reconsidering, right? Go ahead. Fine. Yeah. Mr. Ladd, I assume you want to speak on this. My concern is, is this was dedicated funds, which were a revenue stream to the beach from parking lot revenue prior to the town vote which eliminated that proportion extreme to the beach, the purpose of which was to fund utility improvements at the beach. Where it was dedicated for that purpose, I would rather see it stay in its current form and be used for that purpose rather than go into the general fund and assigned fund benefits. Thank you. Mr. Welsh, did uh, Mr. Ladd state the history accurately? I don't know that he did. I don't know that he didn't either. But that was the purpose for which the fund was created. Right. I attempted to get the town to vote to, in fact, spend that forty-one thousand dollars. The town voted no. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this money's been sitting there for a number of years. Uh, we've got to do something with it. I wanted to do street lighting with it, which is what it was there for. And the street lighting, all the underground wiring is present. Everything is there except setting the lights in place, and. Um, we did that on A and B streets and part of C Street and part of Ash Ashworth Avenue. And the illumination is wonderful. It really provides better illumination. We eliminate all the street lights along those streets that we were paying a lot of money for because of high wattage. Uh, but the town voted to do nothing with that money. They voted to turn it down and we have to do something with it. So I have no, no other choice to provide something done with it. Uh, the auditors that? have questioned why we're holding the money. Is this uh, in the hands of the trustees of the trust fund? This fund? No, I think it's in the hands of the treasurer, isn't it? Yeah. It's in the hands of the treasurer. So yes. there's really no chance for much growth at all in terms of sitting there, growing well, at more all. than that, on them. The, the, the auditors are asking why we're holding the money and doing nothing with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's been held now for five or six years because with no, no mm -hmm. move. I think last year's, uh, was last year we did the, uh, the Warren article fail, wasn't it, last year? Was it the year before? Year before. Two years, yeah. And wasn't that, didn't that get rhetorically caught up in the great decorative lighting yeah. Uh, debate? Yeah. yeah. And so I think that may be oh, yeah. a big part of the reason it failed was because of that. But that is, that's the Yeah, that yeah. may be. The, I'd just as soon see the street lighting erected because it saves the town a lot of money. I, I, would, I would suggest uh, that Board of Selectmen rewrite this to, to put it up there just that way again this year. I don't think the, de the rhetoric on the decorative lighting is anything near what it was two years ago. Well, and plus the location is, is quite different than the real rhetoric which was generated on Lafayette Road. So. The 41,000 won't even do one street. Well, 
that's part of the problem. Oh. So we, we oh, had our, I originally requested they put 150,000 in, uh -huh. uh, or 100,000, I can't remember which. I think it was 100. It was yeah. 100, uh, along with the 41,000, and at least get two more streets done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got too little money in to do anything with it, and it doesn't seem much will put money in there to do anything with it, so we're kind of fixed between right. go, no go kind of scenario. Mr. LeBranch. The, um, I know that you've attempted to do something with this, and I know that it was a lot of, in, in, instead of safety, is, is the word that should have been used instead of decorative. Um, but whatever the case, it was voted down. But my concern is this, is that, and, and I'm the one that voted not to recommend. Um, once, this, once this goes away, it's vanished, and that's it, it's gone. And there were, Skip Windermiller, yep, a number of years ago, worked really, really hard to get a Warren article that was approved by the town to take 20% of the parking fees and use it for infrastructure, mm -hmm. like the lights. Now, the, at the time, the <coughs> village district had an agreement with the town. The village district spent almost a half a million dollars. We had to go out and get a bond, and we, they were redoing the sidewalks, cementing them, the, the town sidewalks, and the village district paid for all that conduit underneath the sidewalks. And the, and the idea was that over a period of years that the streets, you know, the lights would be put up. That was kind of a, the, the agreement that was had. And then enter um, Charlie Preston, and he somehow changed something, and so the village district doesn't get that 20%. It ends up going to the, um, rec, to the rec department. Now, you know, it would be nice if Perhaps there was a petition warrant article that said uh, maybe 15% could go to the rec department and only 5% to the, to the village district. Um, or leave this in there sort of as a bookmark, at least for this year. And that was why I voted no, because <coughs> I'm thinking that perhaps a petition warrant article from down at the beach or 25 people in this town to see if we could add a little more money to it. I don't, I'm not saying that we've got to spend $200,000 right away, but could we add to this a little bit, perhaps, and get to the point where we can do one full street? 41,000 might not do a street, it might do a three or four lights, and who's, you know, you might have trouble even getting somebody that would come in to bother waste their time doing it, but it's sort of a place marker right now. Once it's gone, it's gone. It's vanished completely. And then that's my thinking, and that's, that's why I voted no. I didn't get a chance to speak because it was late, like it is now. Everybody was tired, and you know things went very quickly. But that was the reasoning behind it. Thank you very much. Fred, how much does, uh, to, to complete the project in its entirety, cut, cut them out? I, I couldn't even begin to guess because this takes in the, the precinct, he's, he's correct, the precinct yeah. had gone out and floated a bond issue and they have put conduit in every new sidewalk and conduit splice boxes in every new sidewalk where every light was going to go. Right. For the entire length of the beach, that goes all the way down to Q Street. Yeah. That's a lot of conduit that's in those really? sidewalks. Yeah. And uh, we spent the better part of $150,000 just to do the first three streets plus a, a piece of uh, Ashworth Avenue. Yeah. So to go all the way to Q Street's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. I so just couldn't even guess at it. About 50,000 a street, I guess, maybe? Uh, pretty close to that at this okay. point. Maybe even be more because all those lines yeah. have to be tested, cleaned, blown yeah. out, and mm -hmm. so forth. Okay. Sidewalks have to be cut open in order yeah. to get to the slice boxes. There's a lot of work involved in that. So we got We do have the plans for it. In fact, I've got to set right in my office. Yeah. So, I mean, this project as a total could actually reach seven figures over time, right? It could, okay. um, but that's sort of offset, in my opinion, by the fact that you have, and if you go down to A Street and B Street and C Street at this point, and, and Ashworth Avenue, and look at the difference in lighting between that and the other streets of the oh, beach, yeah. mm -hmm. it's night and day, so to speak, and that's yeah. not an exaggeration. Safety. It really is daytime down there at nighttime. 
uh, it, the crime rate just drops to nothing in those particular streets. We don't have problems down there anymore. There you go. You know, it's it's a safe area. And you don't have nighttime either. Well, that's true. We don't. <laughs> Nobody can get to sleep. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a good investment for the town, and certainly the police department had indicated it was a good investment. Now, if we did all the streets down there, we'd look pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else wish to speak, I, uh, Mr. Lover? I, I think Mr. Lavrance is absolutely right on, and I'm glad he said what he did. I actually like his recommendation because if you remember when Skip started that, and you, I think you might have been a commissioner showing for that. That whole article came as a result, Fred, do you remember, it specifically state work with the town manager, public works director, and village precinct. Right. And so I almost want to leave what Steve says, and if we need to add to it, however we go about that, whether through a <coughs> precinct article adding to that, or maybe Regina bringing it back to Selectman, I, I think Stephen's on the right track because this was unfinished business. Mm. And, and I, I like what, no, I really like the way you explain it. It makes more sense why I would vote the way you did now that I, it, it brings back the memory now. So. Basically, you're throwing a half a million dollars worth of bonding away. Right, that's the exactly The material that's in the sidewalks right. because you'll right. never use it. Yep. If you don't use it at some point in time, the material won't be usable. Right. No, I agree. Well, I mean, we can give it as fund and still do the work. I mean, the fund is necessary well, the, to do the, the work. The point is that the yeah. longer the, the conduit, which is a light plastic conduit, oh, yeah, remains exactly. in the sidewalks, mm -hmm. the harder that concrete's going to get and sooner or later it's going to crush them mm -hmm. before we can get the wiring in. But if we leave the fund and just add to it so that fund still stays, we don't have to change any of the other wording. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lab. Is it possible through uh, the selectman representative, this article could be withdrawn by the selectman. The selectman can do that if they wish. I'll have to bring up on Monday with the board. Would but seem the easiest way to solve yes. the problem right. for tonight yep. and readdress it and it's yep. in a different format. So is, it, is that something I'm understanding the board wants to do, is uh, request the selectman reconsider the existence of this article? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. yes. I'm fine okay. with that. I just want to ask the town manager a question. Sure. You said the auditors noted this in their last audit? They've made notice of, they, they didn't put it in the audit, they've made notice of the fact that they saw it, they want to know why it's nothing to be known. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we should definitely, if, you know, the, I ask my board to see if they want to consider withdrawing this or whatever changes they might want to make. I think we also need to have the plan to do the work. I mean, this was this is a cleanup article the way I look right. at it. If there's no plan to do that project, why have the fund? So, you know, at the same time, if we withdraw this, we should have something definite that's going to happen going forward. Well, and like the town manager says, <coughs> you know, if we wait too long, what the precinct did probably will not be sufficient Three years anymore. ago, we put the warrant article in. We're using right. uh, uh, surplus funds at that point along with this money to try to get this started again to see if we can get it done over a period of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the town voted no. So right. we, you need, we need to do something. It's a plan. It's there. There's a half a million dollars worth of conduit in the bloody sidewalks. It's just going to go to waste. And, but we don't use decorative lighting anymore. <laughs> well, we just call it safety lighting. Right? It's, it's not so much. Good idea. Pe yeah, people had a different idea of what it was called right. simply because that was the name of the fixture that went up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and somebody made a big deal out of that, like we were putting up something from the Taj Mahal, and mm -hmm. I guess that's really not what we're trying to do. Yeah. 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 So do we want to re-vote on Please. this now? Um, well, if, if, if Regina can have them... We can do both. Oh, okay. Do we want to re-vote now? Yes. Okay. I think we should delay okay. the vote. Yeah, I, believe, I agree with Frank. Leave, leave the vote until after, after, after Monday night. Well, decide. there were two members that wanted to change their vote, and that's yeah. why we're doing a re-vote. Well, if those two members still want to do so, we can quickly take a vote and be done with it, still requesting the selectmen to reconsider. That's fine. Yeah. So let's vote, okay? Yeah. Mike, just one final. My thought would be, we, if we voted tonight to reject this, that could support selectmen's representatives argument to the Board of Selectmen as mm. to why it was rejected. That's right. right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Could we also, or somebody add to it, if you get 41,000 and you want to finish the street, 
maybe Fred could get how much money it would cost to finish the street no, 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 so you no, no, could no, put no, a Warren article again to next year. Well, that'll be all part of the selectmen's reconsideration. Right. Right. That's, I'm if just throwing it out. Yeah. Yeah. So all those in favor of recommending this, please raise your hand. I guess that sounds good. Yeah. All those opposed to recommending it, please raise your hand. I'm getting uh, six opposed Wrong. and two abstaining, apparently. So I'm so two abstaining. Yeah. Me and Regina. Oh, yeah. We act as a team. Six <laughs> two. <laughs> Zero six two. <laughs> can I just, <laughs> hey, Mr. Chairman, can I make one more comment on Mr. Welch here? Because I don't think people realize this, but it made me think of the beach, and you know, for many years, Fred and I worked together on that whole infrastructure, and I'll tell you, Mr. Welch deserves a lot of credit. You know, the ocean side, I don't mind the side streets, was awful and everything, but Fred was down there every day. There was a lot of construction, and we had the, the church street, but Mr. Welch, uh, that whole thing that went through with the water and the gas and that, and, and Fred, I have to tell you, uh, the years he had just started, but he spent many years, and that project came through, and I, I, have to, I worked with Fred, and, Mm -hmm. He was down there day and night, and that thing came out pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. Well, we did a good job. Everybody worked on it really hard. <laughs> but yeah. Fred, we almost get you a place down there at one time, because you were down there all the time. <laughs> Actually, I thought they were going to put me in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Fred. I'm glad you're Fred, I want, I want to be sure that the, <coughs> the Board of Selectmen recognize that the Budget Committee as a whole appreciates getting the war articles as early as they did this, yes. this, this cycle. That Very was nice. really great. Uh, very much appreciated. There may be a couple that ought to be curated a little bit further, maybe <coughs> because of that speed factor. Yeah, right. But we really did appreciate getting them very quickly. Good. We, we got to do that for you. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Uh, and we have one, uh, and that's the lease purchase truck, which we're actually waiting for that we haven't voted on at all. Mm -hmm. And a couple right. that may get revoted on at the selectman right. revisit. Right. But otherwise, we're, we've been cleaned up on this. Uh, all we have left to do is the, the town side is the budget, which we'll finalize on Thursday. Uh, next School Wednesday Wednesday. is primarily SAU 90, although we may address uh, some remaining Town 1 articles if it's deemed appropriate to do so, but a primary focus on Wednesday will be SAU 90. Uh, has everyone got okay with that? Yes. So that's our schedule, and anyone have any final comments, Mr. I, LeBrand? I just want to say that um, I think that we should clarify that next Wednesday is going to be the SAU 90. Yeah, I think okay. so, too. And then and not say it might get to some of the uh, because I certainly wouldn't expect Christy and, and Fred to come here be waiting around waiting around because we might get to them right. I think it's not fair to them I think we should just say right now SAU 90 next Wednesday and then next Thursday we finalize the budget and, the town. and anything else for the town okay so I don't we'll expect I don't expect that your attendance will be necessary on Wednesday to be clear on that we may address some other time war articles uh, as a body, that's the body's decision to make. I don't expect that we will be needing any uh, input from you on that. In any case, if we do, we can take it on Thursday because we retake up anything we take up on Wednesday. No, one on one article, we're going to have to, you, you don't have to reconsider, but we're going to have to ask for an additional appropriation because you, you've uh, recommended right. that. So um, I guess we'll be seeing you on Thursday of next week. And sir, the rest of the world that's out there watching on TV from all over the planet Earth. <laughs> Uh, they'll be seeing us again on Wednesday. Well, the right? Chinese are broadcasting from the moon at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christy. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. You can't see us on the other side.